Yo, people, what's going on? Back again. Ransom Gunner in the building. What are you telling me, bro? Muted, bro. Experienced streamer and that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Southgate in. What are you telling me? What are you telling me? It's a happy Friday, bro. There's Southgate links. <laughs> you've got um, you've got the lad from Leicester, 40 M's, linked to that Everton centre back. Uh, yeah, life's good, bro. You, you, <laughs> you lot are dusted, bro. It, it all started off so well. They lured everyone in. And now it's all, hang on a minute, maybe we should go for this guy, maybe we should go for that. Bro, either this is just slow news week because of international break, or they just lured everyone in to get everyone on side, and this is what they actually want to do. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Like I said, the, the, the media circus is in town, innit? Like, it just is what it is, bro. I'm not, I'm not believing most of this stuff. I'll be real, I'm not believing most of this stuff, but this is also... This is the problem, though, when when you get these the influx of these English guys coming in. That's why they don't want them. Do you know what I mean? And this is why they don't want them. Because even at the beginning when it was, yo, we're put it, bringing Manchester United back to Manchester and that, I was like, bro, like even the rhetoric around that was like, that was the Brexit rhetoric in it where it was like, we're going to get our country back. And it's like, bro, allow it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I just want what? We're doing yeah, it yeah, like, bro, make, forget the British core, bruv. All the best teams in this country don't have a British core, bruv, because the English players are not good enough. Do mm. you know what I mean? And and this is what it is, and they've never really been good enough. So, it's one of them things where, for me, when I'm looking at it right now, if we're if the future of this club is having like building English core and this that and the other, we're finished. We're never going to be good enough, bro. Do you know what I mean? Because there's just something about the players here that are just so far behind everyone else bro and a lot of the time it is the coaching at, at grassroots level but also bro there's just i don't know bro this is well, not it it's the mentality it is, it is a mentality bro. thing as well but it's also coaching as well it's also yeah. coaching as well bro because when you look at the iq of a lot of these english players they got no football iq bro it's not necessarily the technical side of the game that they lack um so much now, bro. But like the IQ and the understanding of the game, bro, it's, it's horrible. Do you know what I mean? And this is why when you watch England as well, like they're very boring to watch. I'm only watching the England game tomorrow because they're playing Brazil. That's the only reason right. why I'm watching it. Right. They weren't playing Brazil. I'm not watching the game. I think we'll beat them as well. I think we'll yeah, beat Brazil. Well, they should do. Do you know what I'm saying? This is one of the worst Brazil sides, if not the worst Brazil side that I've seen in my life. And Vinny's not got a good record for the national team either. Like, he yeah. good, but for the national team, he's not he's not been doing it really. But um, yeah. but no, you're right. You're right, man. The coaching in England is dead. Yeah, it's dead. Bro, you've got people like Jack Wilshire coaching. Straight mm. out of football, got his A badge, bang, straight into an under. Oh, I was just I was just watching the Jack Wilshire thing with um bro, he's gotta be the most boring fella on the planet. I can't oh, he, bro, he, oh, he's horrible, bro. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, you know. I was thinking the there. same thing. I was watching it with um Simon Jordan, and honestly, yeah, mentally, I could see why. I could see why like man man just couldn't stay at the top, bro. Because bro, he just he's got nothing about him. Mm. You know what he, I mean? Is um yeah you, you're right he, he when when he when he was talking about oh, I was a hothead and you know they said to me like don't get sent off and he elbowed somebody in the final 
it was like, bro, like you're lucky. You're lucky because if that was a, a club around the world with a better mentality at the time, you wouldn't have even got in the first team. Yeah, they would have f you off straight after that. You would have yeah. been gone in it. Like, yeah. but you know what's mad, yeah? It's like people talk about ability and all these things, but I always say the one thing about the ballers that I've always like seen coming up is they have a certain kind of like aura about them. Even if they're calm, they have a certain level of kind of like confidence and arrogance, kind of that they walk with and that. He just he just didn't have it, bro. He just looked like a normal geezer, innit? And I was thinking, bro, like one of the lads, bro, go down the pub yeah. and get charged up. Like, you know what I'm saying? He'll go and have a fight. Yeah, but you club. need that, <laughs> you need that level of kind of confidence slash arrogance, yeah, to really, really Jude, be the best. Jude's got that. You need it. Jude's yeah. got that. Bro, that boy you walked into Real Madrid and said, Yo, I deserve to be here, bro. Yeah, I'm 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 good enough to play for you lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah you need that, bro. Like, you need it, bro. Do you know what I mean? And it's one of them ones where, like, when you hear players talking about, like, every two years I was scared of getting cut and stuff like that. It's, <laughs> like, it's just like, bro, like, even the ballers that I know now, yeah, like my children of my friends that are in academies right now, their man have a certain swagger about them. There's no way at the end of the season their man are thinking they're getting cut. No. There's no way because there's and a even certain if they get mentality. Cut, they just go, yeah, calm. I'll just go next club. I'll just find another club in it. But there's a certain mentality, a certain swagger, and an aura that that the top players always have about them. And when I was watching that interview, I was thinking, right, he seems proper insecure, you know. Like yeah, do you know, do you know what I'm what saying? About, like when Simon Jordan asked him, yeah, right, because that, that should have gone on for double the length of time, by the way. And yeah, so, it was like so Simon short because Jordan. he was probably bored. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I like Simon Jordan, but he always tries to end the sentence for the person. Mm. Yeah, and then he flitters from pillar to post. It's like, no, just let him speak, bro. Like, let him talk. Mm. Let him go five, six minutes straight without opening your mouth. Yeah, mm. but he keeps cutting him off and diverting it to the next topic. And it's like, bro, come on. But no, you're right, man. You're right. When he was sitting there saying that, um, that, um, yeah, you know, every two years and this and that, and you know, and he, Simon Jordan asked him a question and said, "Did you always think you were like?" growing up through the years, did you think you were really good and you're better than them? Because I've watched um, mm. Jamie O'Hara. He mm. was on, I can't remember whose podcast he was on. The lad's only got about 5K subs. But that mm. Jamie O'Hara interview was sick. He was like, mm. I knew I was better than everyone. There he goes, I knew I was better than everyone. All the way through, like, before I got scouted for teams and I was in academies, I knew I was the best mm. player. You know, I was going out on the pitch and I knew I was going to make it as a footballer. Whereas mm. when he asked the question, it was like, no, I didn't really think I was better than anyone. And it's like, yeah, cool. That's calm. There, yeah, you're kind of grounded with it. But at the same time, surely when you're 14 and you're playing with the under 18s, bro, you know you're better than everyone. Mm. Yeah, you like, do. You, you do know that. You do know yeah, that. But maybe he did know that, and he just didn't want to say that, though. Do you know what I mean? Because some okay. people are worried about how it looks. Whereas Michael Owen was like, "Listen, I knew I was here, minute. Fuck these lot." Yeah, you know I mean, and <laughs> and even Rooney. Rooney said I walked Jamie into that. Jamie Rooney like, said I walked into the team. Bro, but, but but come on, bro. But but you know what it is. I was having this conversation um yesterday uh, with um months, bro. Some a lot of the time, the guys that are the best guys at school, yeah, don't make it. Mm. You know, like that. Like I know because Marlon Harewood went to school with um Joe Cole in it, and I know some some older guys that went to school with them, man. And then man said, from year seven, Joel Cole was kicking ball with year 10s. You knew he was the guy. He was going to make it. But a lot of the time in schools, the guys that are the guys are not the ones that make it, bro. They're not. Do you know what I mean? So maybe Jack Wilshire was around men that were better than him. And he just he just wasn't him. Sometimes you're just not him in it. So, But it was a bit weird seeing his, his personality. Because someone yeah, said, oh, very like... Dry, very dry. Yeah, boring. just boring, bro. Like... He's also got to be careful what he says because he works at the club. I get that. But the thing is, yeah, it's like with his personality as well, like I don't see how he becomes a good coach with that personality. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because he's not got that, not got that Mikel Arteta arrogance. You yeah, but you have to, but, but also as a coach, yeah, you have to be very good at dealing with people, reading people. Do you know what I mean? As it's not just reading the game, bro. It's it's all about being able to interpret different things from people. And he just doesn't seem that switched on at all, bro. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's a bit of a weird one. I don't think your personality necessarily matches your playing style all the time because there's certain players that are really vocal on the pitch, really fiery on the pitch, and off the pitch, they're mutes. I've seen loads of players like that. I had a um 
a kid that I used to kick ball with, an Irish brother, um, Duncan, yeah? And, bro, he was a fullback. Bro, he was, like, the quietest guy. But on the pitch, bro, slide tackles, boom, putting people up in the air, whatever, <laughs> screaming. That's and then on the team... <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> bro. And then on the team bus, bro, he never spoke, bro. Like, man didn't even know what his voice sounded like off the football pitch. Yeah, but do, so, do, do you know, players like that, yeah, it's almost like they just press a switch. I remember, yeah. I remember, I remember um, KSI doing uh, doing a video, yeah, and he said, um, he said, yeah, as soon as I put the camera on, I'm a different person. Like, oh goes, yeah, of course. Camera. Yeah, but, that, but I, I put that. The reason I brought that up is because off camera, he don't act a dickhead. Mm. Yeah, he's a calm, chill person. Like we, I've no, I know people tell knows like, and worked with him in that. Yeah, so I was like, bro, off camera, you barely know that guy's in the room. Mm. Yeah, but as soon as he's on camera, it's all for show and it's all hype and blah blah blah. And that's the same with certain footballers. Like you're saying with this guy, yeah, Scolzi is the same. You never heard Scolzi speak, bro. He never did an interview. Yeah, but mm. on the pitch, you just start kicking people up in the air. Oh, oh I just can't tackle lads. Yeah, mm. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of players like that. Jack Wilshere was a top baller. Yeah, the problem was his brain weren't on that level. We didn't have the mentality or the temperament. Yeah, but that's what that's what it seems like. It was the mentality. Do you know what I mean? It was. He got it, asked about Fabregas, and they see he said that Fabregas. Um, I can't remember who it was that came to him and said, "Yo, that that's that's the level you need to get to." Mm. Yeah, and then he was playing in the Champions League. Was it Champions League semi or something? I think it was Champions League semi. And uh, Simon Jordan said, "What did what did you guys, younger guys, think of that?" And he was like, "Oh, we were all happy for him." That would have pissed me off. Mm. Yeah, I would have been like, "Yo, he's in the team." Yeah, how comes I can't get in the team? Yeah, I need to get better, and that would have inspired me to get better. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, cool, he's he's fine, he's my power in that, but that should be me. But it it, it just looked like he lacked hunger, to be honest. Do you yeah, know what I mean? We know that. That's why he was always injured, bro. Like, yeah, it yeah, looked like he lacked run. hunger, to be fair, because now seeing him speak and hearing how he spoke, how he spoke about like his upbringing, like he was like, oh, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't grow up poor. Like, I grew up like on a council estate, but I didn't grow up like I didn't feel poor. Like, there was no prep. My parents didn't push me to do anything. It was kind of just like, uh, whatever. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's kind of how he comes across. It's kind of just like, if I do, cool. If I don't, cool, win it. And that kind of attitude in life, most of the time, when you're indifferent about things, most of the time, like, you can't really be the best if you're not obsessed in it. Yeah, you have, like, to, you have to be obsessed. You, you have, have to, to be obsessed, YouTube, bro. bro. We're obsessed with YouTube. Yeah, yeah, like you have to be obsessed, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? And and it's like you you don't you don't have to be obsessed with everything, mm. but you just need to be obsessed with certain things. There's certain players, like you can tell when you see guys like like the most technical ballers, like the Neymars and all of these man. These men are obsessed with the football. Then they might not be obsessed with other parts of the game. They might hate doing the extra running and whatever, but you'll never see these guys without a ball at their feet. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you need to have some sort of obsession. When it's like, ah, cool, like, man, we'll go out, smoke a cigarette, do this. Go back. <laughs> Just taxi like, driver up, getting kicked out of a Yeah, car. bro, it's not serious, bro. Do you know what I mean? And then also, like someone said about David Beckham's dad, the way David Beckham's dad's onto him, yeah, bro, parenting is very important. Look at how Thierry Henry talks about his dad as well. People always say, oh, no, but you're being too tough on your kids, bro. Listen, if you don't, listen, if you don't discipline your kids, then life will discipline them. Facts. And you then, know, and like that. Get to the top, and that's what they want to do. Doesn't matter what, what business and industry it is, yeah, you have to have discipline. Yeah, and you have mm -hmm. to have somebody behind you who's a strong character, normally the father, yeah, that, that says, yeah, cool, mm -hmm. well done today, mate. Yeah, but you need to do mm -hmm. better. Yeah, you didn't mm. do this, 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 isn't this today. Well done for that. But these other three things? No, 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 no. That was trash. Mm. Yeah, and then you'll go back to the drawing board. But this is where people sink and swim. Yeah, sink or swim. And most people in this era, they sink, bruv. Yeah, because mm. they can't take criticism. Yeah, they can't take that. Yeah, after these people ain't got their dad there anyway, which mm. is sad. Yeah, which is why there's so many feminine kids out there, feminine boys out there now, because they ain't got the father figure there. Yeah, and this mm. is why people just quit stuff way too quick. But we see it on YouTube. We see a channel set up. They, they won't get the numbers they want real quick, and then they disappear. Mm. Don't work like that. Yeah, if you want something, you have to be obsessed with that thing to a certain degree. You can't let it take over your whole life, obviously. Yeah, but at the same time, you have to want to strive to be better. And if you've got no yeah, but it's not that it takes over your life. It becomes part of a lifestyle, isn't it? Because that's what it is, bro. Like I say to you guys, what you do eighty percent of the time will define you, bro. Mm. And that's what it is. If you eat well and you train 80% of the time, 20% of the time, you can eat whatever you want and chill out. And you'll look like what you do 80% of the time. 
Fact. This is just what it is. So you've got to have that mentality, bro. Like you make it a part of your lifestyle. So when man say, oh, if they say to a man, oh, you're obsessed with going to the gym. Nah, it's just a part of my daily routine. It, like it, it, it's not an obsession in that, in that point. It's just like I wake up, I shower, I go gym, I come home, I eat food. The same way you eat food every day, you should move every day. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It just becomes... It just becomes every, it just becomes part of your life, innit? And if you want to be top, top, top at football, then you need to have a ball at your feet every day. Mm. Really? Do you know what I mean? You do, especially when you're younger. They ain't on it, bro. Most of them ain't on it. Listen, to get into an academy in England nowadays is probably the easiest thing in the world. Oh, oh, it's way, way easier than it used to be, for sure. Right. To get in an academy 20 years ago, bro, you had to be elite. You had to be one of the most elite kids in the country to get into that academy. Yeah. yeah, and you'd have 10, 12, 15 teams queuing up to get you in their academy. You know, like, mm. now, easy, bruv. Look how many dead ballers there are now. Bro, mm. like Brennan Johnson, like, come and do me a favour, bro. You know what it is, yeah? He was, Wilshire was talking about the difference in the football now. Like, tactically, he was even saying, yeah, like, now they teach you, you get coached positionally where to be on the pitch so you don't have to play up against players. Mm. So you don't have to be as good. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you're playing in space now. Like, you're not really playing up against people. Like I was saying to you guys in the last show, football used to be more about isolation. Left winger versus the right back. You used to see these little duels in the game where it was isolation. And now, because it's all zonal and it's all about the system and stuff like that, you don't see specialist dribblers anymore because they don't have to worry about beating their fullback. They just cut inside. Or just smash it straight off them for a corner. But that's it. So, like, the skill set that it takes to be able to play in these systems is a lot lower. That's why I'm saying to you, man, a lot of these men that you, man, are rating as ballers, yeah, they don't even have 30% of the technical ability of the players 10 years ago because they don't need it. Mm. They don't need it because they, they just need to know how to be functional in a system, bro. You literally get coached what areas to be in now, bro. So, And that's also why players can't think. On their feet. That's why you see all these dead nil nils, where two ta- two teams just cancel each other out. Players get to the edge of the box instead of shooting. They're passing it, trying to find a gap that never opens, bro. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, players aren't encouraged to use their own mind now. Managers are telling you, coaches are telling you, what areas to be in on the pitch, bro. Like, that's why you're not seeing the Grealish of of Aston Villa, whose manager said, you know what, go wherever the ball is and do whatever you want. Now it's you have to you have to occupy this little space, and you have to um, play football within this space in between these players. Like, yeah. bro, the game's completely different, bro. If you, so if you go out of your little zone, yeah, then you're getting hooked. But well, there you go. So so when I say these players ain't as good, yeah, it's factual because they don't need to be, and mm. that's why it's difficult. And that's why I say when you're comparing eras, you really can't compare anything past about 10 years because anything over that it's almost like a different sport right. it's almost like a different sport right, look at back in the day when we used to have the arsenal man united jewels and that yeah yeah it'd always be built up yeah as um Pires up against neville yeah or like um soul campbell up against van nistory like and th- these games were like prime games viero against keen and that i think he's froze lads um the top reds have got him, lads, but we'll carry on. But it's true. Like, back in the day, it was all, yeah, Cole versus Ronaldo. Exactly, bro. Yeah, now, you don't see these matchups anymore. Yeah, because nobody can take a man on. Like, literally, bro, the amount of people I see try, like, they, they can't dribble. Nobody can dribble. Yeah, back in the day, Giggsy was running rings around people. Like, top, top players in that, yeah? Yeah, the top reds have infiltrated him, lads. They've got him. Yeah, they've got him. That that teaching for slander in Southgate, lads. <laughs> yeah, Martin Woey, Martinelli versus Trent. Bro, that's a non-contest every time. That's about the only one. Yeah, because they don't it don't get built up in terms of like of oh, the matchups in this game. Yeah, when Arsenal play Man City at the end of this month, you ain't gonna see all these matchups. You ain't gonna see it. Yeah, just whoever wins the midfield wins the game, and that's it. Yeah, it ain't gonna be dubbed. Kyle Walker versus Martinelli or Saka up against Vardy Al. Why? Because Saka ain't going to dribble past anyone. Yeah, Martinelli might have a go. Yeah, but that's about it. Yeah, in midfield, yeah, cool. Declan Rice and Rodri, whatever. Ain't like Keenan Vieira. Let's be real. 
Yeah, f- football now is so filtered and so diluted. Yeah, look at corners now. You've got the smallest man marking the biggest man. Yeah, it's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Odegaard marking, who is it he was marking? Tarkovsky, when we conceded and lost 1 0 to them. Yeah, his internet dropped it. We'll be back in a second, guys. Yeah, Tarkovsky being marked on a corner by Odegaard. I've never understood it. Why Why don't you just get your biggest centre-back to mark their biggest centre-back? What, what, what about that? Instead, they don't. Yeah, because it's all about thinking about breaking away off of that corner. So now they mark space. You know, space don't score a goal, mate. Right. I was watching Portugal last night. And I know they slapped up Sweden in the end. Right. But that Liao scored a really good goal in that game. But before that, yeah, I think it was a shot from Nunes. He passed it in the... Jinked past the guy, he flicked it inside, and he's literally 12 yards out, dead center of goal, could have put it either corner. Instead, he passes it to Ramos, who's facing the other way, facing back to goal with three players around him. Why have you passed that? Like, brain dead. These footballers are no good, man. They're no good. Yeah, like, there's some decent players out there, but when I look at these players, I'm just like, bro, you lot are shit. Like, honestly, I just don't get it. Hardly anyone can dribble a ball. Yeah, hardly anyone has got any creativity whatsoever. When I say creativity, yeah, like I'm talking Sesk, yeah, David Silva, yeah, proper. Big up Flawless as well for the raid, bruv. Big up, man. It's the league on a takeover, bruv. Um, run to me back in a second, guys. It's Wi Fi dropped. But yeah, big up to everyone who's locked in. Smash the like button up as well, Io Di Mutante. Get these likes up. But yeah, when I'm watching these footballers now, where's the creativity? creativity? Yeah, where's the dribbling? Yeah, where's that little spark? Yeah, we used to have, like, Ronaldinho's. Even forget that era. Let's go back. Mahrez is gone. Mahrez is sitting on the bum. Yeah, you're on your bum, bruv. Yeah, David Silva is sitting on your bum. Just make you look stupid. Kozola, big up, bruv. Another one. Yeah, Ozil, another one. Yeah, it just make you look stupid on certain times. Like, these players will have the ability to sit you down real quick. I don't see that anymore. Yeah, I don't see that anymore. But now, it's all about how far you can run. It's about um, your GA. Anyone who don't get GA is not rated. Why? Yeah, Eden Hazard, another one, bruv. Yeah, baller. Absolute baller. That guy would ruin you when he wanted it. Yeah, Neymar, ruin you when he wanted it. Yeah, Isco, baller. He's still playing, bro. He's still doing his thing at Betis, bruv. He's still playing well. I mean, this is the thing. Them players are a dying breed now. So when you see players that can actually, like, so Bernardo Silva, for example. Bernardo don't get GA. You don't get loads of G. I know he scored two deflected goals the other day. Yeah, that guy's an absolute baller. But he's not rated that highly. Nobody talks about him, yeah, because he don't get GA. What a load of rubbish. He is a proper footballer. Yeah, and he could have played in the 90s. He could have played in the noughties. You know, because he is that good. And he don't rely on pace. Yeah, he can dribble. He can not make you for fun. Yeah, but he's not creative, really. Yeah, but he's the link man. Yeah, he makes everything tick in midfield. He'll keep the tempo going. He can slow it down if he wants. You don't see players like that really anymore. You don't see players in midfield slowing a game down to their pace like Scolzi used to. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous, man. Football in this era is dead. It is absolutely dead. Yeah, and then when you hear Jack Wilshere talking about him, saying about the space and all of that, like, yeah, we, we kind of coach him into spaces and that. Bro, you know football's going to get worse from here on in. It's definitely going to get worse. But then there will come a time where the, the switch will go the other way. Yeah, maybe in another 10, 15 years' time, strikers will be all the rage again. 4 4 2 will be all the rage again. Yeah, but right now, now this is awful to watch at times. I can't lie. Like the defending in that game last night, that Portugal game for both teams, by the way, was awful. Absolutely awful. Yeah, but it's now gone down the route of all about the money. Yeah, so you don't have to be good anymore. Yeah, it's just. Can we can we get higher up the table to get enough money in? Yeah, can we flog enough shirts? Yeah, I, I did a video earlier on my React channel about the England shirt. They've they've changed the St George's cross to a different colour. What's that all about? What's that all about? Yeah, all about the money. It's all about testing the water. Yeah, to see if enough people are accepted. So now they can peddle it out. That's stage one. Then they'll go stage two and they'll change it completely. Yeah, it's it's all about the money now. Yeah, and it's just so jarring because like I've grown up on that era of watching proper footballers They're on the green screen behind me, proper ballers. Everything was just about playing football. Yeah, now you've got taking the knee, you've got the rainbow mob, 
Yeah, you've got other things that are infiltrating the game. And listen, understand that these things are whatever, whatever, but this is football, bro. Yeah, we ain't come to see the flags. Yeah, we've come to see the football. Yeah, now the football's dead. Now that's infiltrating everywhere. Yeah, and it's just like, bro, this is just a sham. It's an absolute sham. It's an absolute sham. Yeah, and it's all part of the tic-tac-toe, bro, to totalitarian control. Yeah, and I'm telling you, it is going to get so much worse. Yeah, but then there will come a point where enough people have had enough of it. Because yeah, there's a lot of people out there, like myself, that call this out as crap. You know, there's a lot of people that don't call it out and they're just accepting it for now. But at some point, everyone's got a tipping point. At some point, people will call it out. Yeah, look at Chelsea, for example. A prime example is Chelsea Football Club. Chelsea Football Club were elite about two years ago. They had an elite owner. They, had, they kept the standards high, even though they hadn't won a title for a while. Still nicked the Champions League. They were still World Club, World Cup, Super Cup, getting to the finals, etc. Right? But then, you know, all of a sudden, he gets kicked out of the country gets his club taken away from him, and now they've got the, the Bowley in charge and Egg Barley. And everyone's just accepting it for now. But then at some point, there will be a tipping point with Chelsea where the fans go, nah, this is our football club and you've gone too far now. Yeah, the problem is most, most people don't see it until it's too late and then it's extremely hard to get it back. And this is where football's gone. It's where football's gone. Everyone's just going, oh, but yeah, this is fine. Oh, but why do you care about the cross on the back of the England shirt? Well, hang on, that's England's flag, mate. <laughs> like, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, this is where it's at. But at some point, yeah, the, the tipping point tips the other way and football will go back to normality. Yeah, my fucking route, I just decided to just start doing some bullshit, bruv. Yeah, man, the United Gremlins got you, bruv. That's for the yeah, slum of the Southgate, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's pissed me off because my, my thing's built into the fucking, into the apartment, bruv. So, man, I had to go, oh, my days. Man, I had to go into the little boiler bit and fucking reset yeah. everything. Flip, flip the switch. Yeah, no, man. Sure, no, I was the same, bro. Like the, the way football is now, with that you were saying about Wilshire with the zones and that. Yeah, you know, that's why you don't see any pure footballers anymore. Yeah, no, nah, because do. they don't need to be able to play anymore, Lee. They, don't, they don't need to be able to play. Yeah. yeah, they don't yeah, need I'm to be able to play Bernardo. no more, bro. Bernardo Silva, yeah, is a pure footballer. Yeah, that guy is such a good footballer. He could play, could have played in any era, but nobody yeah. really rates him when they talk about the best midfielders in the league. Yeah, why? Because he don't score any goals. Yeah, facts. But, bro, you got to realise, a lot of these foreign players, yeah, these men grew up playing futsal, bro. That's why they're so good on the ball. And that's why they're so good in tight spaces. They don't grow up playing that in this country, bro. That's why most of the ballers here are just kick and run ballers, really, isn't it? Like, their men are just passion merchants. It's crazy, yeah? Like, it's just like that. And the most technical players here used to be the cage players, the street players. But now there's not really cage ball no more. So, do you know what I mean? Like, even that's dying out. Even that's dying out. Like, when you look at these English players now, what, you got Musiala and Sancho are probably, like, the last two that you're going to see with feet like that. Mm, yeah, that's not many. That's it. You're not going to see these ballers no more because men are not kicking ball on the street no more. So after these lot, like, oh, man, the, guy, the kids that are 13 now, by the time they're 23, they're not going to have feet like that, bro. It's a myth. No, but it's an they'll, they'll be getting paid more than anyone. <laughs> no, hundred percent. Top dollar for being trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hundred percent. The top ballers always end up going to the best club anyway, which would be Real Madrid. Yeah, they'll end up at they'll end up at they'll end up at the best clubs. But it's like what you need now is a lot less. It's a lot mm. less to become elite, 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 bro. You just need to get a good manager that puts you in a good system. And you can literally have a you can have a whole career, bro. You can have a whole career, bro. It's like yeah, literally, when, like, bro. Even when I look at Sterling, yeah, like what Pep done for his career is unbelievable. Do you know what I'm saying? Because to think that my man's gonna be what thirty now, and you watch him play now, and when you watch him play now, you can never imagine that he was ever at a top team. Yeah, you can't imagine it because you don't have nothing. You don't have none of the attributes that make you a top player, but there were world class shouts for him, like free yeah, because seasons. because he can run fast. And De Bruyne was giving him back stick tappings, bro. That's it's it. crazy. That's, That's literally crazy. it, bro. He's got a dead first touch. He can't dribble. His footballing mm. IQ is in the bin. No yeah. IQ. Yeah, literally zero. Yeah, yeah, that guy don't know when to pass and when to shoot. He always gets it wrong. Yeah, he, like the shot Mudrick had the other day. All he had to do was jump, bro, or just open his legs, and Mudrick scores. Instead, he just stood there looking at him, taking the shot straight at him. <laughs> like, mm. 
It's but like, you know what it on, is, man. yeah? You know what I, what I clocked? Because, like, I watch a lot of, like, other sports and other sports content, a lot of basketball stuff and all these things. The only way you can really build your football IQ, because I don't believe that, I don't believe that you can be taught football IQ anyway. I just believe that you're born with a certain IQ and a certain ability to problem solve in it. Because that's all that, that's all that IQ is. And IQ, football IQ doesn't just show itself in football. It might show itself playing other sports or basketball. It's the ability to see a problem and solve it very quickly and understand um, mm. certain things quickly, in it? Always make the right decision. Exactly. But if you're a player where the, the coach is forever taking the thinking, the thought process out of the game for you, how can you be intelligent? Because you don't need to use your brain, bro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like a lot of people yeah, don't know how to get from A to B yeah, because they use their sat-nav all the time. So if you take the sat-nav off them, they don't know how they got there. They don't remember how they got there now. They're so used to just looking at the screen as they drive. Yeah. You see so what I'm the, saying? And it's the thickest and most lowest IQ generation we've ever seen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody, in the, somebody in the chat said Pep ruined football. No, Pep didn't ruin football, bro. All the people trying to copy Pep are ruining football. Mm. Yeah, Pep, well, it's not Pep's fault. You know, Pep's playing the football that he plays. Yeah, and mm. it works for him. Yeah, all these other teams that are trying to copy Pep, it ain't working for them because they still can't beat him. Yeah. So why, they, why don't they do saying girls? They don't. Mm. Yeah, they don't because they haven't they haven't got any idea of what to do and they just think that because he's doing that we just mm. copy him and eventually it'll work right that's insanity yeah the two yeah, managers beat and pep to a title in england yeah were conte and Klopp. they don't play anything near pep ball no they don't they don't do you know what i mean so it's just one of them ones but even in those systems yeah you you kind of need you need certain profiles of players in it and and that's just all it is like with peps it's kind of like you don't you don't have to be the best to look the best in that system because there's the thought process is taken out for, from you and that's why you see players like Sterling mm. that could play in in the um system yeah and Pep will say that yo Sterling was an important player for me in that system but when you look at his actual ability it's not that high but then you get players with higher abilities like Grealish that's struggling in a Pep system because everything that makes him a good player is taken away from him in that system. Yeah, it's not natural to him. And and he, that's and that that's what it is. He said, yeah, I'm playing left back. He goes, I have to do it, otherwise I'm not in the team. But that's what I'm saying. So, and like where my man said, it starts in academies. But this is exactly the problem. And this is why these men are worse. Because from the age of six, seven years old, they're not having to think. They just turn up and do it. And it just becomes automated and automated. And then you just produce these robots because they're doing things without thinking. Whereas the best players used to be the ones that the managers used to say to them, like the Eric Cantonas, like the um, the um, Burkamps, just get on the ball. Just get on the ball and do do your thing. Get on the ball. Get on and the, the ball. Team told, Yo, just give it to Dennis, bro. Just give it to yeah. Dennis. Yeah, oh, just give it to Dennis. Bro. He'll find you. Like, just mm. whatever. And like, that's why when I see players like Cole Palmer now, it's like, He's a throwback player. Like, he just wants to get on the ball. That's mm. why he can be in the false nine. He could be on the right. He could be anywhere, bro. He could be he's in the, the 10. Rulers, man. Exactly. He's the only one. But that's, but that's why he's not at Man City. But that's why he's not at City. And that's why he's now at Chelsea. And that's why he's not failing like Raheem's failing. Because mm. in a team where it's kind of chaos and there's no system, Cole Palmer is an actual footballer. So... It doesn't matter. If you threw Grealish into that Chelsea system, it'd be the same. He'll just float around, Foden, pick up the ball. Foden's the exception as well, because Foden's the only one really at Man City that's allowed any, to go anywhere. Yeah, but you don't see that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Foden earns the right yeah, to get on the ball because he's, his pressing stats are actually crazy. He runs yeah. a lot. That's why Phil Foden, it looks like he's got freedom, but really he's just defending, bro. Like he's just pressing. Yeah, you watch, if you watch him, he's just running around, pressing and stuff like that. But yeah, he's he got doesn't. A good engine, man. Just yeah. runs around 90 minutes yeah. nonstop, same pace all the way in through. In possession, he doesn't have in possession, he doesn't have the freedom that it looks like. He just runs a lot. Mm. Do you know that's what I'm true. saying? Hey, and that's why I prefer Raiders, well, man. Big up flawless. Hey, big up flawless. And that's why I prefer. That's why I say you see in international football, yeah. The reason why England don't do that well is because a lot of these players outside the system, they just don't have the quality. 
You know what I'm saying? The reason why Brazil did as well as they did, because it weren't about formations. It weren't about systems. It weren't about balance, bro. Brazil never had no balance. They used to have... The game. Bro, Brazil had two fullbacks here that were attackers. Yeah. And then six attackers in front of them. Do you know what I mean? So they played with two defenders <laughs> and eight attackers and they smoked everyone. Do you know what I mean? And it wasn't about the system. It was just about ball blood. We got more ballers than you. We got more quality than you. And they always and used to drop and end. change positions mid-game. And there was no like, you have to stay on the left wing. You have yeah. to come back to the left back. No, 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 no. I'm going over there for five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Or it was I'm going to get the ball over here. Yeah, like, and then I'm going to run through four. Like, and then Roberto mm -hmm. Carlos will be bombing down the left. Yeah, yeah. Rivaldo. Like, bro, they had so many good players, man. And that is the thing, yeah. Same, same with the Dutch team, but to a lesser extent, because they didn't win anything, yeah. But the Dutch team yeah. back in the day as well, bro, how many good players did they have? And they never oh, really bro, had... It was, it was nearly every team, though, to be fair. It was nearly every team, yeah. They had ballers, innit? Um, mm. And someone said, oh, Foden don't do that well for England. Bro, let me tell you something, yeah. It's one of them ones where in international football, in international football, ballers like Grealish, ball, ballers like Cole Palmer and these guys, yeah. You see, these these are Mavericks. Foden ain't a Maverick. Foden is a very good system player. Like, he's similar to, like, in the Iniesta mode, in the sense that Iniesta's a, a great system player for Barca, but in the Real Madrid midfield, he wouldn't have looked like the same player because it's like, it just doesn't suit the football, innit? Like, yeah, Foden... Like carried away when we when we link to foreign players. Yeah, so people yeah. keep saying about Zubamendi. You know, I said this to you on Tuesday, yeah? Mm. Bro, Zuberman, I, I don't see him playing in a team that has 70% of the ball every week. Mm. So how good is he when, we, if he comes to Arsenal, we have 70% of the ball every week, bruv? Like, how good are you? Because I don't see it. Well, I've not seen you do that at Sociedad. Yeah, yeah I know different. we're in a table tennis match. I know you're mm. good. Yeah, and it's different players for different clubs, different systems. Yeah, you're right about Iniesta, though. If you put Iniesta in that midfield at Real Madrid, he would never have been that good. No, it's not the same team, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? So... People always see um, system player as derogatory term. It's not, bro. Certain players just have to play in a certain environment. And that's it. Foden's an eight. People say Foden's a 10. He's not a 10. He's an eight, bro. It's mm. just that the way that City play, he just doesn't really play there. He doesn't play in an eight. But if he was playing a 4-3-3 three, three with two eights, Foden would be one of the eights, bro. Like, he's not He's not a 10. He doesn't have that pass that um, Cole Palmer's got. Mm. He ain't got that slide rule weight of pass that Cole Palmer's got. He also hasn't got the finishing and the composure in front of goal that Cole Palmer's got. Cole Palmer is a, is a proper 10 because he can shoot, he can pass. Phil Foden's just a ball carrier, really. Really, yeah. when you look at it. Do you know what I mean? He's at eight. He can, and, he can and, do well in a 10, but he'd have to play in a team that don't rely on him for the creativity as a 10. Yeah, but if you're not a creator, you're not a 10, though. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the that's 10. The thing, that's the way football is, isn't it? How many, yeah. many midfield 10s now are creators? Not many of them, bro, because the creativity now comes down the wing. Exactly. But you can't, if you're not actually creative, and I don't mean get stats, because you can be creative and not get the stats because you might play the pass before the assist. Mm -hmm. But you have to be the guy that's going to unlock the door, innit? You have to be that guy. Phil Foden's not that guy. He'll never be that guy. Yeah, You'll never, he, you'll never he, be that guy. Well, you could, you could pick the ball up on a half turn or you, with your back in the centre circle, face, facing your own goal, three players pressing you and you just twist out, bang, now you're on a counter. Yeah, yeah bro. But that's yeah. what, he, he's good at, he's good at turning, he's good at turning and driving with the ball, similar to Jack Wilshire. And Jack Wilshire was not a 10 either. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's an eight. And, and that's what it is, turning and driving and carrying the ball, that's a specialist skill that a lot of midfield players now do not have, but that's, that's not what 10s do. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, Burkham was a proper 10. That was a proper mm. 10, bruv. Like, wait a pass. Mm. Oh, was it all proper 10? But they, they ain't, bro, there ain't no 10s anymore, man. Like, no, there's not. It's like somebody put in the chat. Big up the chat as well, man. Um, yeah. But yeah, somebody put in the chat. The creativity comes from fullbacks. It's true. Fullbacks yeah. and, and wingers. But soon, mm. soon enough, it will go back to how it was back in the 90s. 4-4-2. Mm. Yeah. Two banks of four. Big man, little man. At some point in the next 20 years, football will go back to that because... You can't keep playing football like this, yeah, expecting to, to get good results out of it. Mm. Yeah, because everyone is genuinely copying Pep. Yeah. And the teams that don't copy Pep, Real Madrid, they're going to win the league. Mm. Yeah, Barcelona don't copy Pep. Yeah, they won the league last season. You know, like um, Inter, they're gonna, they got to a Champions League final last season. They don't copy Pep. 
Mm. Yeah, Klopp don't copy Pep. He's won a trophy this season. Teams that win trophies don't copy Pep. Yes, yeah, so at some point, yes, these big clubs are going to have to start reverting back to to something else because it ain't working. Or hope that Pep retires, bro. <laughs> just like, do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Fair. Because it, it's just it's going to get worse before it gets better. But at some point, tens will be back in fashion. Two strikers will be back in fashion. Yeah, but it's going to take another 20, 30 years. You know what it is? They'll, once they work out a way to play that way, then potentially they will. But I don't know. Football now is so systematic and these guys are so focused on kind of stifling the other team instead of playing their own game that they probably have worked out that it's more... Um, I don't know, more optimal to play with one striker, even though to me that doesn't make sense anyway. That doesn't mm. make sense because if you're going to press high, if you're actually going to press high, yeah, and your focus is on winning the ball higher up, it would make sense to have two strikers because mm. you've got an extra player to press with. Do you know what I mean? That's just my logic. Yeah. But it depends. Like Playing with one striker is a bit negative. But again, the same, the same point that you made earlier <clears throat> about um, how brain dead most of these players are. Yeah, this is why this is why it's seen as negative, like you said, to have one striker because they know that as soon as the other team nick the ball, bro, they're brain dead. And if they're out of position defensively, they're finished. So if they have two players up front, that's now one less defender. Mm. Yeah, so now that's why they don't do it because it's like... Of course it have, is. They have to stick to their space. But now if you get a quick counter-attack against you, you've now got yeah. two strikers up there instead of one. Now you're missing someone in midfield. Yeah. Yeah, or defence. And that comment, um, that super chat you had about Fergie and um, Wenger, yeah, just they used to just let players play, bro. It's true. They did. Like, Wenger, you, Wenger's thing was crazy. That's why I think Wenger's football was the best that I've seen because it was physical and it was technical at the same time. It had the right, it had the right balance of both. Like, when you looked yeah. at a lot of Arsenal's players, you wouldn't look at them and say they were super technical, like the Abues and... And the Tories and that, the yeah. Lawrence, they weren't mad technical, but he had these man bopping. And this mm. is why, yeah, when people say Man United, oh, we don't have the players. Bro, you don't need mad technical players to play a good brand of football. You don't. You don't, bro. Like, I saw Van Gaal, bro, he had Chris Mullin stepping out from centre-back. Like, and Mike Smalling Charlie. was looking. Mike yeah, <laughs> bro, bro, like big Mike, you know, balling out. <laughs> And you don't need to be the most technical, bro. When you drill things again and again and again and again, players start to, it becomes automated. Just like mm -hmm. I said, in the academy, the reason why most of these footballers don't have a brain of their own is because now they get told if they, they come out of this area, they're getting dropped. Yeah, bro, I've been, I've been watching Girona a lot this season, yeah. Daily Blin yeah. is barely at centre-back, but he's a centre-back. Uh, he's he's barely at centre-back, bro. He's normally on the left wing. Right, or he's in the centre, left centre, like in the eight position when they have the ball. Yeah. yeah. But then as soon as they lose the ball, he's back into the defensive shape. Yeah. But on the ball, Daily Blind is on the left wing more often mm. than not, or the left eight. Yeah. And he's been absolutely quality this season. Yeah. There you go. That proves it right there because he ain't the best footballer you'll ever see. But, no, if but you technically, Daily Blind is very good, and also, yeah, he is very intelligent. His football IQ is through the roof. But that's why he can do it. Roof. That's why they got him. Because he's yeah. at the right age. He's played for big clubs. Yeah. And he's sound technically. Yeah. Mm. But he's not amazing. Yeah. But again, he can do a do a job in terms of he's got the brain on him. And if mm. I give you this instruction, yeah, you're going to take it in first time. I don't need to keep telling you because now you're mm. just going to do it. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they got him. Bro, he has been absolutely unbelievable this season. Yeah. I don't know how old he is. Like, he's what, 30 odd? Yeah. But he's been around. The yeah. Floor. Daily Blinn must be 33. Bro, the amount of times he's been moving into the penalty box, chipping in with goals this season is a joke. Mm. I mean, it's got about four or five goals. Yeah, but that's what, like you just said about you don't even have to be that great no. yeah, to do something in the system. That's proof right there. How many? Yeah. David Blind, I think, was a free signing, wasn't he? He would have been, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think he was a free signing for Girona, bruv. Like, why didn't nobody else buy him? Why didn't nobody else get him? But that manager goes, yo, this guy's been around the block. He, he can do a job for me. I can play him here. He's good on the ball. Yeah. And the way I want to play, he'll fit perfect. And he has fitted perfect. He's yep. 34. There you go. There you go. And that, and that's the thing, yeah. Like, when you look at some of these younger players, bro, yeah, I just look at them. Like, that, that lad, uh, what's his name? Colwell. 
Cole has yeah. got good good size. He's a good height. Yeah, he's got good size in terms of physicality. Yeah, he's got decent tech. Yeah, and like in terms of like he can he can go past a man, bring the ball out of defense. Yeah, yeah. but defensively, I don't see it, bro. Yeah, people are hyping him. He's got John Terry's number on his back. Yeah, you but know again, what? He's just he's, he's just a decent he's just a decent technical player. Um, good physical stature as well, mm. and that's about it. that. That's about it to be honest. That's but, bro, I think you could make better with a better manager because he's got oh, the basic, sure. yeah. But he'll never get better all the time. He's still at Chelsea. Yeah, but he's not being coached there right now because my man's mm. not on anything, bro. Poch exactly. ain't on anything. I'll be honest. Like it's one of them ones. But to be fair. To be fair to Pochettino, yeah, most of these guys are supposed to be coached at a younger age, bro. Like, they're supposed to have these things already, innit? They're meant to have these things already. Like, once you're a grown man and you're playing professional football, football, you're supposed to have enough data in your mind that a manager is supposed to be able to ask you to do something and you're just able to do it straight away. But unfortunately, like I said, because of the academy system now and the way these guys are, are just being churned out as robots, managers are coming in and asking players to do things and they can't do it. <laughs> basic things as well basic things like yeah. even when we look at the way man united presses yeah like our press is dead yeah cool we got a dead manager but also most of these players are so brain dead they probably can't even sense danger themselves bro like <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you should be able to see danger bro like i see players lost and that like mm. lost out on the pitch looking around and they don't they don't know like in their head yo this is the danger this is the passing lane i need to cut off they should just know these things, bro. You're supposed to know. Yeah, and mate, it's true. It's very true. And but these, these guys don't know, man. Do you know what I mean? So someone said in the chat earlier, England are doing really well internationally. Bro, England are going to do well internationally, yeah. Especially in... Yeah, no worries. Especially in Europe, yeah, because, bro, look at the population of the United Kingdom, bro. For a country the size of this... Look at the population of the United Kingdom. Last time I checked, yeah, it was like what 65 million or something like that. That's crazy. The population of Croatia, yeah, is 3.8 million, bruv. 3.8 million. And the Croatians, bro, they produce more technical and more tactically versatile players. That's crazy. Man is saying it's 60 million now. What, what, what man talking about? This is crazy. So we're supposed to be dominating Europe anyway, bro. Look at the population of, of this little island. So just from the sheer density of people that live on this little patch of land, yeah, man are supposed to do something. Croatia ain't even got 4 million people in the whole country. Croatia's less populated than what? Manchester. So, bro, like, it's not really a surprise, yeah, that England, yeah, England at youth level are doing the mad thing. It's not really a surprise. And then it's funny, all these men on Twitter, do you know what I mean, doing all of this nonsense about, oh, like, there's no English players in the England team anymore and all that. Bro, listen, that, that is not our fault, blood. You know, like that. When, when you look at, when you look at all of, most of the players that are coming through, like the system, yeah, now, they're, they're from immigrant backgrounds as well, bro. Like, this country is built on immigration, bro. Yeah, that's, bro that's, that's the same in all countries. Like, bro, if you go through the Spanish team, there's Italians in it. And right. vice versa. That's just the way the world is now. But, Everyone's... Lee, this is the mad thing, bro. They're going on, like, Grealish and Rice aren't Irish. And, 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 and Rooney <laughs> weren't Irish. A list out. And Maguire weren't the Irish. The 11 we had for England, and not one of them was actually born and bred English with English family. Who cares, man? Get Who cares, bro? But that's what I'm trying to say. But for a country, yeah, if you look at the whole United Kingdom, yeah, as a whole, do you know what I'm saying? What, what, 60 odd million people here, yeah? If you look at the UK, like, bro, they're supposed to be one of the best teams in Europe, bro. Look how dense it is, bro. Like I was saying, there's, bro, there's more people in Manchester than in Croatia, Lee. Bro, there's people on YouTube with more subs than Croatia's got population. Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> that's isn't it? what I'm saying. And we're not even talking about the massive channels, bro. We're just talking about a channel with four or five mil. Yeah, yeah. let's be real. Yeah, AFTV have nearly got half of that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And between the two fan channels of our clubs, they've got that. Yeah, they've got that. Yeah, All right, that's that's what I'm saying. Croatia shouldn't be they're overperforming what they should be doing. So, exactly. So that doesn't mean yeah that these English players are good, bro. It doesn't mean that. It means exactly the opposite, because 
when you look at the density and the population of this place yeah, they, they've got more quality to choose from and even yeah. so they still ain't won nothing right. so this is this is just what it is so until really they should be dominating they should yeah, be right. dominating when you look at the density because they've got more people to choose from and they've got more different types of people to choose from because you look at the immigration and all those things as well Croatia when in Croatia, their man are choosing from mostly Croatian people, bro. Yeah. England, England get to choose from from Kobe Mino, the Ghanaian, Saka, the Nigerian. Yeah. The do you know Irish. what I'm saying? The Irish, the Jamaicans, they get to choose from all that, and they still can't win, bro. Well, I just googled the <laughs> uh, the population of Spain, forty seven mil. Yeah, population of um, France, sixty seven mil. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. So that's why France are right up there as well. And now comes France are dominating. Yeah, because they're all about the same. Like, do you know what I'm saying? With England, why can't we dominate? Oh, yeah, because we get we get dead borders. Yeah, we get dead borders. Yeah, but the thing is, also, their coaching is better, bro. And also, their coaches have to work harder to get badges, bro. They don't just give badges, yeah? They don't just give badges to a player. Oh, what? You just finished your career. Here's a badge. Here's a job. Like Wilshire. Yeah, look, look at Xavi. Xavi went to Qatar, wasn't it? Yeah, he I think did. Xavi won about five trophies, five titles on the spin in Qatar before he got the Barca gig. Mm. Yeah, he's done a season at Barca, won the league. Yeah, now he's quit. Yeah, yeah. why? Because yeah, could you imagine if they just thrown him straight in when he said when he went to Qatar and just said, "No, nah, don't go Qatar, bro. Straight in." Mm. It wouldn't have lasted a season. See, a man said great academies in Croatia and Serbia exactly because of the coaching, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? And this is the point. Like, the coaching here, yeah, ain't that good, bro, because it's so easy to get badges here, bro. Like, honestly, like, if you know people at the FA, bro, you kiss some asses, bro, and they'll just give you one. Lampard ain't even got his A licence, is he? Or his pro licence. But he didn't, when he, he didn't when he was Chelsea manager. They don't they don't really do that in, in, in other countries, bro. In Germany, yeah. Like, I think I've done a, a stream with about this with you guys, and it showed in Germany you have to do a certain number of hours of coaching Mm. to to get your license before you get it in england you don't have to do that bro like bruv you just need to get a club to pay for your thing and you just roll through get your badge and not not only that the prices to do each level vary in each country yeah yep. and it's more expensive here than it is even in ireland so a lot of people are going from here to ireland to pay less yep. to go get it do you know what yeah, i mean Whereas... in, in holland the, the badges are cheaper exactly and but, but you, have you have to, to do, have more, to do more. more yeah exactly so you have better coaches, bro. This is why no England, no English manager ain't won the league. So yeah, because if you think yeah, you have to do a certain amount of hours on each stage, yeah, right? Yeah. And you have to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in England, you can pay for it, but you don't have to do that set hours. Yeah. So everyone's paying for it, bro. They're going, oh, it don't matter, it's more expensive. I don't have to do any work for that, really. Yeah, yeah but like, this is it. So think about it. Imagine if you lived in a country where you didn't have to do driving lessons, you could just buy your driver's license. You're not gonna be you're not gonna be a better driver than the man them that had to do 40 hours before they sat their test. You're not going to be. Do you know mm. what I mean? All things equal. You're not going to be. And th and this is what these English managers are, bro. Most of these guys in these academies are not good, bro. And even Harry Redknapp was speaking about it. A lot of the, these coaches in the academies now are young, are young kids, yeah. The young coaches that aren't getting paid very much, never really played football either. Mm. And they're just doing it, like, because, right, I'm outside, innit? Man get to coach football to kids. And then they think they're good coaches. Most of these men are scrubs, bro. And the, and the thing is, as well, yeah, like, a lot of ex-players get, get a gig straight away in England. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't necessarily happen on the continent, right? But not only that, yeah, you always get this new up-and-coming manager out of nowhere that nobody's mm. ever heard of, like Potter, mm. for example. Does yeah. anyone but remember Graham Potter playing Potter went, Yeah, Potter went Sweden, bro. Yeah, man was in Sweden winning titles in Sweden, bro. Does anyone yeah. remember him playing football? Because apparently he played football, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and he was one that came through. Yeah. And it was like, whoa, who's this guy? Oh, he's managing. Oh, he played Arsenal, beat Arsenal, mm -hmm. well, whatever. Yeah. Like we obviously knocked him out. But over, over in other countries, bro, like you see these, you're like, who's that guy? Who's this guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they have to work for their badges. And if they're good, because, and they will be good, most of them, because they've put the hours in and they mm -hmm. don't just get a leg up. Whereas in England, yeah. jobs for the boys. It's the same managers doing the circuit for jobs. But this is why I rate Howell and Potter because these men actually, them men have they've put in the work. Do you know what I'm saying? Eddie Howe travelled around and was working 
alongside foreign coaches and studying the game. I think he went at Letty. Um and then you've got um Graham Potter that's been abroad and he's found his formula, his way of playing. Do you know what I mean? Not like the likes of Lampard that just finished playing and went straight into a job, yeah, failed and then got another one. Failed really? and got another, another one. one. <laughs> Do you see what I'm trying to say? And this is why man can't rate these English managers, bro. And if you think, bro, if this is what's happening at the top of our game, yeah, with the likes of Rooney and Lampard, imagine what's happening in the academies, bro. Yeah. Imagine what's yeah, happening I'm in the academies. Happy. If it's so easy, yeah, to go and get a championship gig, yeah, or a Premier League job, yeah, for these men, imagine the state of the coaches in the academies. Imagine how yeah. bad they are. That's mm. true. Bro, how can Jack Wilshire just walk straight into Arsenal under 18s? Come on, Because well, it's Jack Wilshire. Like, it makes no sense. Yeah, it makes no sense yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, Xavi Alonso was um, was the B team manager at, was it Madrid or Sociedad? I think it was Sociedad. Yeah, it was, got, it was Sociedad. Yeah, and then he got the gig at, um, at Leverkusen. He's obviously going to mm. win the league. Yeah, but he mm. didn't just go, oh, I'm Xavi Alonso, give me a job. Mm. Uh, he, he got the B team. Yeah, look at Pep. Pep had the B team. Then he got the main team. Yeah. Yeah, Zidane had the B team. Then he got the main team. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and these are decent coaches. Yeah, but when you look at our English coaches, bruv, they are crap. Eddie Howe's decent. Yeah, I, I like Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe's yeah, good. He is a good coach. Yeah, but again, yeah, he will be sacked from Newcastle. Yeah. He will be sacked and he will get another job real quick. Yeah, yeah, but will he get the job that he he wants, or will he just take a job and then he'll start being a journeyman and and they'll get sacked from that one and then he'll end up doing the circuit, yeah, like all the other English managers, yeah, like yeah. because that's what happens over here. Yeah, when when Xavi leaves Barca, I guarantee that geezer don't get a job for a couple of years. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna be it's gonna be job. difficult. He won't want a job. Yeah, yeah, because he said he's been getting on... bullied. He needs to chill now. Mental health thing, isn't it? Like that's that's another thing man was saying with Jack Wilshere in, in that interview. Man was saying when he got sent off, he got absolutely cooked by um, what's your guy's name? Gallas. No, not Gallas. No, no, not Gallas. Gallas, him in the game Gallas, Gallas was killing him in the game because he kept giving the ball away. But he said, Who's, debut, your, um, "Who's your coach, Brady or something?" Liam Brady. Yeah, Liam Brady. Yeah, he said that Brady <laughs> ripped him a new one. Yeah, after he got sent off. Yeah, and he was saying like, "Oh, and nowadays that they, they talk about mental health, and maybe like you wouldn't do that to a kid now." And he goes, do you think it helped? He said, yeah, like I cried and that, but I needed that. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? I cried when I sat on my own, he said, didn't he? But that's it, bro. <laughs> Just not getting cooked like that. The funny thing is, before he got sent off 10 minutes into the game, Brady yeah. said to him, it was a final, Brady said to him, yo, stay on the pitch, Jack. Yeah, because I know you've got a hot head, but stay on the pitch, mate, and you'll win player of the tournament. Ten minutes later, the geezer give him a little bit of verbal, and he's connected both in the face. <laughs> bro, but that's what I mean. And he got cooked, and he deserved it, bro. Like, and now these kids are, you know, what I mean, they're getting like, they're getting wrapped in flipping bubble wrap now. Nah, bro, you have to absolutely scold these lot, bro, because you have to prepare them, yeah, for the consequences of you're at Arsenal. Yeah, you're you have to the prepare them. Bro. Yeah, you have to prepare them for the consequences of, yo, you cannot do this. You have to be held accountable. Now you can't hold people accountable. But then, but talking about... the thing, yeah, Wilshere said in that, yeah, when he said about Gallas cooking him, yeah, absolutely mm. ripping him all game for giving the ball away. He said, I was playing within myself because I was on the edge, didn't want to give the ball away. Mm. Yeah, Which can kind of be detrimental, but at the same time, mm. yeah, at the same time, bruv, that's Willie Gallas, bruv. Yeah. yeah. You were playing for Arsenal men's first team now. Yeah, and he yeah. even said it a little bit later down the road. Yeah, he, he said, said, "Yo, oh, like that's when I realized I was. I'm, I, I'm here now. Our, yeah, I'm not playing no kid football anymore. I'm playing proper men's football now. And but nowadays you can't do that. It's an English thing, bro. Yeah, this happens on the mm. continent all the time, bro. Yeah, like mm. can you imagine these players going over and playing in the Turkish league? Bro, that, that league's wild. Did you see? Hey, bro, did you see? Um, you lose a game, them men are following you home after the game. Did you see Batshuayi do a roundhouse kick on a fan the other day? Nah. <laughs> Yeah, the fans of the other team stormed the pitch to beat them all up, in it. The, the, the team they were playing. So I think they were at home. The rival fans stormed the pitch to beat up the players of the team they were playing against. This big mm. fat brother's running across the pitch here. Yeah. Batshuayi just stand there, roundhouse kicked him straight in the face, bro. <laughs> that's mad. Listen, you're going to fight for your life, innit? He's a real G, though. At least, you know, he's someone that's been through something in life. And that's the thing, though. Mentally, it prepares you, yeah? 
or even going abroad and stuff like that. That's one thing about these other foreign players because they play abroad and they travel, bro. They they've been in real hostile environments. Them man have they're built different. Ultras, bro. Look at look how many times we see the clips do the rounds. So the ultras stand there giving the players a dressing down at full time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. I seen that. Go abroad. I seen that in Italy. Up. Man are standing there getting told off by three middle aged men, you know, and these guys are standing there like. Yeah, being... AC Milan had it this season. Yeah. Livio Giroud saying, yes, boss. No boss. Yeah. yeah man, man. Bro, shook, bro. Damstadt, Damstadt got pam 5 0 the other week. The bottom of the German league. Yeah, yeah. I see them, man, oh. screaming. After he was the getting game. mad at the players. They were like, yes, sir. No, sir. Three bags full, sir. Bro, mm. can you imagine, yeah? This is why English players don't go abroad so often. This is why I rate Jude for going abroad to Dortmund in the first place and then going to Madrid. Yeah? Sancho going abroad. Yeah, yeah. it builds it builds different characters yeah. still. Yeah, yeah. Leon do it all the time. Leon had that Lac Lacazette standing there nearly in tears, bro, a couple of months back when they mm. were bottom of the league, yeah? And this is the thing. Can you imagine? Who would be the ultras over here, bro? Like, oh, that's toxic and negative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, hey, that comment is killing me as well. That, that bottom one there yeah, from Murray. Yeah, Schalke fans chase Kalaznak after they got relegated. Yeah, him and Mustafi were on 10 toes off the coach, bruv. 20 ultras chasing them. Nah, <laughs> you just see bro. him. I've never seen Mustafi run so quick. Nah, hey right, guys, we saw. Remember, there was that. What, what club was it? Yeah, they sent the ultras to their kids' final, the under eights, and that. <laughs> and them man were throwing flares on the pitch and that and the kids were warming up and the kids are like eight years old bro it was the sickest <laughs> thing i've ever seen bro i don't know what country that was in it might have been turkey or, yeah, something. They do it different, bro. They don't or eastern about. europe tapped like this is what real mentality yeah, is imagine, imagine playing in serbia or the polish league or something bro. Like, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> it was smashed every game literally yeah but lee but this is what it is so it's like these man, these man hold standards in it, and that's why these slow, these snowflakes here, Lee. And that's why I say, and I was hoping these man got sent to Woolly, you know, to toughen up these guys, you know, because mm. these guys are what? absolute pussies, Lee. The same guys that turn around here yeah, and say, Oh, we're toxic and negative, and this, that, and the other, bro. Man, need to understand, yeah, that, bro. We are like lemon and herb compared to these guys, yeah, that are over there. Threatening man's lives and that. And bro, really the out ultras, here. The Napoli Ultras, yeah, we're going to kidnap yeah, um, five of the players' mm. wives, bruv. They mm. all had to move city. Yeah, who was the guy who went from Roma? Where did he go? Um, what's his name, man? Yeah, he got run out of Roma, bruv, this season. Man got chased. I think they chased him and his wife. Yeah, they chased him and his wife around town, bruv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, what player was that? Was it yeah. that Zianolo, bro, or something? Zan was it Zaniolo? No, I don't I think, think it, it was... was I think it no, was him, bro. They chased him and his wife, bro. I swear. <laughs> it was him. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, it was, it was. He went to Gala. He went, he went to Gala Tassarai. It is mad. How can you run, man? His wife had to take her shoes off and that. Mad team. Yeah, bro, honestly, yeah. Napoli, yeah. Napoli Ultras, yeah. Like yeah. Spalletti, the, the manager, yeah. They stole the steering wheel and some CDs and that out of his car, bro. So he couldn't <laughs> drive his car. Yeah. Then when he won the title, they, they met up with him and said, We're really sorry. You can have it back now. <laughs> and stole his steering wheel. This is what I'm bro, saying. Sport, sport in Lisbon, yeah. Stormed the training ground and beat up mm. the, Das Bost or Boss Dust or whatever his name is. Yeah. Punched Rash him Boss. up, bro. Yeah, yeah. They stormed the training ground and battered all the players so they didn't get Champions League football that season. Yeah. I literally punched them all up, bro. And we're sitting there on YouTube while we're toxic and negative. Shut up, man. Yeah, mm. like it's, it's bollocks. It's funny, man. Like when when um Messi didn't score for three games, the, the Barca boys were chasing him out the stadium, bro. Like he didn't score it's for crazy. three games. <laughs> <laughs> they smashed all the wing mirrors off at Real Madrid. Yeah, the club, Sergio Ramos had to calm it down as they're all leaving the ground after they lost. <laughs> bro, yeah, that's bro, crazy. Kicking the wing mirrors off of Gareth Bale's car and all of that. Like, yeah, crazy. bro. But this is what it is, bro. This is how you set standards, bro. And this is why I don't understand. I, bro. But then again, Lee, it makes sense, bro, because it smokes and mirrors, bro. In this tea, in this country, yeah, these men always go on like they're so hard, this strong British spirit, and then them man go abroad in tournaments <laughs> and get beaten up. You know them? Right? <laughs> like, bro, it's, it's all a facade, bro. It's Thanks. all a facade, bro. This tough English guy thing, yeah, it's all a facade, bro, because them man got, got weighed in in Russia when they went to Russia, bro. And this is and this is exactly what happens, bro. It's bro, all like, guys, bro, they get weighed in. Okay. Yeah, bro, it's fake, bro. Like, I ain't got no time for this, bro. Really, these men are just snowflakes, bro. This is but, what but, it you is. Know, you know why this league's like this, though, yeah? It's because the Premier League, TNT Sport and Sky Sports, they run English mm. football. Yeah. yeah. They run English football, yeah? They have the funding, they have the purse strings, the Premier League have the product, yeah? Mm. They're all working together, 
Yeah, all these mm. team huddles before kickoff and that. Like, come on, get out of here. It's all part of building up the look at our league. It's massive. We're the best. We pay the biggest money. It's all mm. part of the image. It's got the best marketing. But they don't do all this marketing abroad. Mm. Yeah, just win football, mate. Just win games. And if you don't, even if you're relegated, that Damstadt ultra, there was 5,000 of them standing behind him in the crowd at the end of the game. And he's mm. on the pit going nuts. Bro, they're bottom of the league. So, yeah, yeah but, bro. but there's a way to lose. You don't get pound five. Yeah, bro. bro it is. Mate. You know what it is? It's the propaganda thing, Lee, that kills me. Because I swear Joey Barton posted something. You, you see the thing that's doing the rounds here yeah, with all the black players in the England team. Mm. And I think Joey Barton said something like, oh, there's no real men anymore. Like these guys are tra training in diamond earrings and leggings and stuff like that. <laughs> and I was thinking, bro, when Tommy Robinson tried to do the bad man thing, bro, their man got <laughs> weighed in, bro. What are you talking about? I remember, bro, when, when them man were doing the BLM protest, yeah, and they done their little EDL march, their man got beat up. There was pictures of them man getting firemen carried out. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, them man always do this, oh, there's no real men anywhere, no more, and this, that, and the other. But, bro, let me tell you something. The whole mentality in this country, yeah, is cooked, bruv. Mm. is cooked yeah. and that's and just that's just the facts do you know what i'm saying like these brothers are not on nothing bro they're not on nothing there's no mentality no more there's no mental strength do you know what i mean and it's not and it's mainly this country because people say oh the west but it's not really the west no nah. it's it's england and america yeah that's you it. know like that and it's not all of america because if you go to certain parts of america in the south they don't give a fuck you know them ones there? It's only places like New York and that. You know what I'm saying? The big cities. <laughs> like, if you go down York, south, them man are talking about mental health, bro. Them man don't care about mental health, blood, in, in them redneck states, bruv. Do you think them man care about mental health? In Alabama. You know what I'm saying? You really <laughs> care about mental bro. health in Alabama, bro. Man are coming out the yard with a double barrel shotgun, bruv. <laughs> them man don't care about no <laughs> mental Shooting health. Shooting up war and that running down the road, bruv. Taking it over. Pink roast for dinner, like. Bro, listen. <laughs> That is crazy, bro. That's what I mean. It's not the West because in France, <laughs> these men don't care about that. I promise you. Oh, bro, in they're, Italy, they know how to protest, man. They in know how Italy, bro, in France, yeah. them men are setting cars on police cars on fire, bro. Do you think these men care? Do you, they're not doing the mental health thing, bro. They're lighting up the whole ends. Like, it's just literally here, bro. In England, where they do this thing. They're going like they're on smoke and then you say one thing, yeah, and everyone wants you cancelled. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's the biggest lie, bro. These men are not on anything. It's the this is the softest place, bro. This is what it is. You say the wrong thing, and all of a sudden, everyone, everyone wants to hang you, bro. That's you. That's you done. Man are scared to speak their mind. Man can't do nothing, bro. This place bro, is so. I, I was watching. I was watching a Tate um, interview earlier, and he was saying, if you've got a normal job, like a, a nine till five, a ten till two, whatever, you can't speak your mind in English. No. You lose your job yeah. and you can't feed your family. Yeah, he goes, but if you work on the internet, yeah, you're less controllable. Yeah. Yeah. But then you get the cancel culture that comes in with it because now you're offending the people that have regular jobs. Yeah. And they get yeah. offended by it. But even though they agree, a lot of them, they just mm. want you canceled because they can't say it. Yeah. yeah. And he was absolutely spot on with that because there's so many people that try and cancel us every week, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> Literally bro, every but week. Thing, but, but Lee, but, but this is the thing, bro. bro like, bro, man say, man, man say how irrelevant man is yeah and a man's trending on twitter like like at least once a month mm -hmm. you know like that so like, like every time really we don't celebrate a goal in it that's what it is bruv we're trending number one <laughs> but but this but this is exactly what i'm saying bro so that oh, the whole thing fans your fake fans the whole do, you reckon, do you reckon they do this in italy now yeah, when they're storming the pitch do you reckon they're going to twitter and saying look at all these ultras storming the pitch they're fake fans probably there's probably people here bro the people that storm the pitch in these countries are 10 times more passionate than us. Yep. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, the, bro, I'm only the way I am because I don't I don't believe in doing anything in half measures, innit? Like, if, I'm, if I want to support my team and I want my team to win, my mentality is we need to be doing everything possible to win. And if we're not doing that, man's going to be pissed off. These men are third, fourth, fifth, sixth generation of beaten up footballers. <laughs> like their family, bro. These men are going to games. Trying These to men are, the bro. Man, know your surname and know that your great granddad used to pressure man. Like, do you know what I mean? It's different. These guys are like, 
these men have legacy of pressuring pressuring players, bro. They'll say that's so and so's grandson. Manager stare like that is okay. different. Yeah, it is. Did I? Yeah, it makes me laugh. Oh, these men look shook. These are men with wives and kids at home, scared, bro. Billionaires shit in their pants, shit in their pants on, the on TV, <laughs> on TV. When bro, they know Leon the guy can't PSG, beat them yeah? up, bro. Leon played PSG this season. They were bottom of the league. Leon four nil yeah. down at half time, bro. Yeah, PSG were four nil up. I think it was at Leon. I may be wrong, mm. but either way. 4-0 at half time, bruv. The ultras demanded the team come out, bruv. Get the manager out now, half time. Yeah, if do the team talk on the pitch. Yeah, team talk on the pitch with a megaphone and all that, yeah? Yeah. They beat they beat them 1-0 in the second half, lost 4-1. Yeah? Mm. Guess what? Accountability, lads. Yeah? Them Leon players were standing there. Yes, boss. No, boss. Yeah? They put in the best performance they've ever put in. Yeah? And fair enough, they lost 4-1. They were never going to win the game. But guess what? Accountability. They were shook. They were playing for their lives, bro. <laughs> they were thinking, we ain't getting out of this stadium. We have to We have to win the second half. Yeah, but there's none of that here. And there never has been, bro. So I don't know why these men are pretending that they're on that. Even the fact that them, man, look what they've done to the England kit, bruv. Look at all the colours yeah, they went and put in the England kit. Do you think you could do that to the Italy kit? Fuck right, around and I find out. I did a video on this. If you, I, I, bro, I'm going to put it in the private chat. Just Google this, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to say next. We'll probably get cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> bro, bro, do that to the Italy kit, see what happens. You know, bro. Yeah, like, bro, Google, it's mad. Just Google that, bro. Just Google that. It's very reminiscent. <laughs> nah, bro. Oh, bro, mad thing. It, it's do you know what I'm saying? Reminiscent. Delete your delete your search history afterwards, bro. You don't nah, want big man thing though. It's like, bro, I'm telling you, bro. Do that, bro. You can do that to England because they're not gonna do nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, the bro, is, the these prime minister come nothing. out and said it's a disgrace. Yeah. Right and blah blah blah. Do you know what Nike called that with that what? with that St George's bro? That's our English flag. Yeah, that's yeah? crazy. You can't do that. And they've changed the colours. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. And the that's prime nice. ministers come out and said it's a disgrace. Do you know what Nike called it? Yeah, what? creative, creative. What they call it? Creative. Somebody help me in the chat. Creative something they put it as. Oh, creative. Play playful cre creativity or something. Bro, creative. Bro, you don't play with shit like that you know what i mean you don't play you don't play like people don't play about their culture bro and this is why i say mm. yeah this is why i say there's certain cultures you can't fuck with their stuff and i like, bro i respect the shit out of that yeah, they called it playful creativity nah bro, no, don't don't play flag yeah <laughs> don't play with that you know what I'm, don't play with that you know what I'm saying? Playful creativity. Bro, it's white and red. What are you doing? Why have you put purple on it and yeah, blue? Bruv, yeah, bruv. Try to do that to Jamaica, bro. Try to do that to Jamaica. Bro, try to do that to a lot of countries, man. It's bro, just... no, nah, because, bro, it's like, bro, man don't, man don't play with man's culture like that. That's crazy. Like, you shouldn't even... Is, as much as I know that country is buried, bro, that is still the flag of the country I was born in. And, and no, but Lee, you need to understand the fact that they felt comfortable enough to do that to England tells you just exactly where this country is. And the fact that you know, I mean, this country's fun. become so liberal, yeah, mm. that you can pretty much do whatever outrageous thing that you want, yeah, other than tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> you can do anything, bro, and man will just have it, bro. You couldn't even do that to the American flag, bro. If you ever thought you could do that to the Americans, their head's gone. It's only England you can do this to, yeah. It's only but England, this, this, bro. This is what I said on my video, I did it on the Reacts channel earlier. I was like, bro, like. Only in England would this be allowed. Yeah. And then I used the example of France. I said, would you, France's flag is red, blue, and uh, blue, white, and red. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I was saying this to my missus earlier. She's Romanian. Yeah. I yeah. said, what would happen if they changed the color for the shirt? She said, no, nah, it ain't happening. No, nah, hell no. I said, Imagine they started putting purple in there instead of blue. Bro, said, every nah, night nah, store in the country would be on fire, bruv. Somebody, somebody on my comments on that bro, video said that bro. they tried to do this with the England cricket team. Yeah. Um, Adidas tried to do it. With the England cricket team, yeah, and it caused a massive drama, and everyone boycotted buying the shirt, the cricket shirt, yeah, five mm -hmm. years ago, or whatever. So they, they had to go back to and, and recall all the shirts they'd sold, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, and then go back to normal, yeah. But the mm -hmm. problem is now we're five years further down the road. We've had a lockdown since, yeah. yeah. Everything's being peddled out on TV subconsciously. Mm -hmm. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Like you, you can't like now you can get away with it. Yeah, now you can get away with it because the, I see. I, I didn't even know it was a thing. I went on Twitter earlier, yeah, and I was just scrolling and I see it. And I read some of the comments on the tweet. Yeah, and people are going, "Oh, what are you moaning for? It's just a, it's just a flag." 
It's not though. I'm moaning for it's just a flag. It's yeah, but that's how it always starts, isn't it? That's what yeah. they say to the man. Them they say, "Oh, what are you worried about? It's just your willy, man. Just cut it off." <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> bro. That's what they man do, bro. That's what they do, bro. First, it's the flag. Do you know what I mean, bro? Mm. Lee, this is crazy. That's how they they just try to desensitize, man. And this is what I say: we're living in society right now, yeah. Where these you'll see something and these men will tell you, oh no, it's not that. Don't worry about that. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's the sky's the sky's green, lads. It, it's not blue, that like, it just looks blue. Like, don't worry about it. It's, it's not that, bruv. Do you know what I mean? That's what them man will tell you, but that's it's not a green, mirage, lads. It's a facade, lads. The sky is really green. It's just all yeah, we've been conned for years. Like, but, it's but, green. but this is this is what it is now. We're now living in a, in, in a society now, especially here. It's just like, no, oh, no, 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 no. It's whatever. No, it's only a flag. Don't worry. Like, bro, you that bro, there's no like that brother told me two defensive lines, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? And the lines aren't the same no more because now everything's on a spectrum now. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? But That's what man, they tell you. Got on the spectrum, <laughs> bro. Listen, in this country, everything's on the spectrum, bro. Even the defensive lines on a football pitch is on the spectrum. You know that. Mm. That so it's not a definitive line anymore. Do you know what I mean? So you might as well dash away the offside rule now because the line's not a line no more. Mm. Like, what are we doing here? Like, everything is down to interpretation, so everyone can just do with it what they want. Nah, don't don't put yeah. my flag's colours down to interpretation, bro. Yeah. It's white and but red. So anyone, white who and calls red. It out, anyone who calls it out is negative and toxic. Bruv, it's crazy, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what are these men doing? Like, it's every, everything is on a spectrum now, because then it gives the weirdos, yeah, like, freedom to just run away with it, bro. I don't know. You see, it says you see, it's got the three lions on the show. It'd be the three unicorns before much longer, bro. No, bro. no I don't know, bud. Might be three rainbows, blood. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Away with the star as well. I think they took the one star off. They took the star off. They chat, me out. I think they took the star off the shirt. Yeah, for the World Cup, our, world, our one World Cup. I think they took the star Why? off. Somebody, I don't know if it's true. Somebody in the comments on that video I did said they took the star off. <laughs> I was like, why are you taking the star off? No, oh, that's what I'm saying. Maybe you call a wind up. I don't know. Nice. Three man, mutants. Bro. Yeah, get three mutants instead of three lions, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, trust me. <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, bro. We're in dangerous territory, bro. I'll be honest. We're in very dangerous <laughs> territory. Bro. Bro. We're only here. Yeah, back in back in the day when you were growing up, your mum would give you a backhand, bro. Like, or your old man would slap you up if you stepped out of line. Yeah, and you'd do it in yeah. broad daylight in a shopping centre. Yeah. But then you got all the do gooders back then. You know, saying, oh, you, no, it's not fair. You shouldn't be hitting your children and all of this and that, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward 30 years, bruv, here we are. They're pissing around. Hey, bro, hell no, did someone say that they took the star off because the star is racist? Please, no. Don't lie. Right, now, that's got to be a wind-up. So I don't that's know if they have taken bad, the star off, but somebody on my video comment said they've taken the star off. I'm more that's, upset about that. That's got to like, be banned. That. That's got to be banned. I'll be honest. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, mm. we know there's no lions in the UK. You know what I mean? Obviously, they stole that as well, but... Do you know what I mean? Like, it just is what it is, isn't it? But it should have been like pigeons or something or foxes. You know what I mean? Like, pigeons are quite intelligent, bro. They can find their way back home. <laughs> no, nah, it's mad because, bro, it's straight. You don't you don't see pigeons everywhere, innit? But same with foxes, bro. It's only really London, man, see foxes on the road, 10 toes and that, bro. They need to be on the shirt. Yeah, like 3 a.m. You're driving home and you nearly hit a fox. Oh, bro, or a deer. 10 toes. These foxes are outside, bro. Bro, I, I see wild boar around there. I went to take the bins down the other week, yeah, and there was a big wild boar just roaming around near the bin. Mm. The road. I was like, yeah, see you later. <laughs> bro, it was hench. But they roam free around here, bro. Wild yeah. boar everywhere around here. Yeah. But they're big and they're protective of the babies, bro. If I see, if I'm trying to get the bin bag, I get out of the car and I put, the, I see a, a wild boar with the babies, I'm straight back in the car. Man getting yeah. chased by a flipping boar, you know. That's crazy, you know. There's signs around here that says, yeah, wild boar run free. Yeah, but fair enough, but probably, but yeah, I swear their culture, they, well, they eat a lot of, um, eat a lot of pork yeah, anyway. They so. ain't meat on me, so they ain't feasting off me. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably leave you alone, to be fair. Yeah, they're probably like, yeah, we can't smell much meat there, bruv, like, let him be. <laughs> mm. But that's what I'm saying, but, but, but listen, but, man, I'm saying the star, if the star's racist, do you know what I'm saying, then obviously the rainbow got hijacked as well. It's like, bro, they're, man, they're just running through. All of the stuff that we used to look at as kids, yeah, that were harmless, bro. And then the manager's adopting them, bro. Do you remember so when they said, tried, um, what, what club was it that has the um, the the sailboat as their emblem? Is it Man United? Yeah, yeah but there was a boat on us. Yeah, because I, thought, I think it was Man United. Because there was yeah. a big story about a year ago that that was racist. 
yeah, because you had the sailboat as your uh, like on your badge or something. I think it was United. What? Maybe I'm wrong. Man, I'm saying Leeds, bruv. No, it was it was City. It's City. It's Man City. Yeah, it's Man City. Yeah, and that caused a massive like three day viral thing because somebody had called it out and said it's racist. Like, and they were trying to get Man City. They were getting a petition together to get Man City to change their badge. Yeah, but we've yeah. got but we've got a boat on ours as well at the top. Yeah, I don't really get it. We've got yeah. we've got a boat at the top in the in the thing. There's a boat at the top. There is. Yeah, it's apparently it's racist, bro. Man said it was a slave <laughs> ship. Yeah, it probably was. So what? That's not my fault. Do you know what I mean? That does bro, like, football, football team. Yeah? Who cares what the badge is, bro? Like, yeah, but bro, bro, even if it was a slave ship, who gives a shit, bro? Like, do you know what I'm saying? It's not anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you see what I mean? Lee? Like, bro, it's just like, well, bro, when can we move on from this? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, even if it was at the time, who cares? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, who cares, bro? Like, I, I, I just don't understand. Why are people so offended, yeah, by nothing, bro? What's there to be offended by? Do you know what I'm saying? Man United on... They like to be do-gooders and busy, bro. Bro, it's just a ship, bro. It's just a boat. You know them, man? Mm. So now every picture picture of a boat like that, a sail ship, apparently now it's a slave ship. Yeah, but that's what I mean. We're we're erasing all these these boats out of like, we're just going to delete the boat emoji. Bro, every ship is not a slave ship, bro. Like, maybe it's just a normal boat, blood. Like, do you know what I mean? We are we going to delete the emojis now? Like we're going to start getting rid of the the uh, the the ship emoji and that, like and the boat emoji. Brav, like, it's it's nonsense, bro. Bro, a uh, boat is a boat, fam. Do you know what I'm saying? Now I'm, I like just tell my kids it was the boat. Titanic. Look. You know the ones there, like I just tell tell my kids it was the Titanic, bro. Like whatever. Okay, man like, said change the blue Peter badge as well. <laughs> <laughs> bro, like bruv, man, man are saying yeah, man are going on like. People were the only things that got transported on ships, blood. Like, they didn't transport <laughs> everything on ships, bro, before man had aeroplanes. Yeah, like, these people have never been on a boat before. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, bro, it's, Lee, it's, it's boring, bro. Here. Like, bro, it's boring. Do you know what I'm saying? Man are talking about, oh, but respect the ancestors, bro. Listen, if you man want to get offended by a shit that you got no business being offended by, that's your problem. <laughs> I don't, I don't live like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. what? What are we doing here now? Like, bro, if I, if me as a black man was walking around my life always looking for something to be offended by, I would never live my life, bro. Man, are out here getting upset or of flipping shit for no reason, bro. Yeah, but you these know what people mean? Have to do freedom fires, man, and then they're, 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 and then they're tweeting that off their iPhone. Hey, bro, life's hard enough, bro, and I'm supposed to be looking around for more things to be outraged about. Nah, bro, I'm sorry. Imagine waking Can't, up every day and that is your life. Like, What's next? Sad. Oh no, I can't support the club, man. There's a slave ship on there. How do you know it's a slave ship? Oh, someone told me on Twitter. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, don't buy me any more merch, mum. Yeah, it's a slave ship in it. That's it. Right. Like, oh, like. No, I'm gonna go and support Chelsea now instead. Oh no, I can't do that because they don't let you on the train. But there you go. <laughs> where am I? Where, where, where else? Am, where am I going now? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Where am I going now? <laughs> Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? This just don't even make no sense. Yeah, angry over statues as well. That's another one. People get angry over statues, bruv. Like, do me a favor. Bruv, yeah. the, bruv, the whole thing is it's just like, bro, when you've got loads of stuff going on in your own life, you can't be getting angry at little things like <laughs> this, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, people really gotta put food here yeah, on the table for their families, bro. Like that's more important than virtue signaling. You know, like that. That doesn't make no sense. Like, this it don't make no want. sense. They want people to virtue signal. Divide and conquer, bruv. The more people that are arguing with each other, they're all taking their eye off the actual yeah, ball, innit? But this is the thing. But this is the thing, Lee. Like, it's just not that deep no more, bro. And this is why, yeah? Like, this is why it's very, very important, yeah, for people, yeah, in life. Do not pass generational trauma down to your children, bro. Right. Do not do it because they don't live in the same world that you lived in, innit? So leave it out, bro, with all this bullshit. I don't need to be offended by a fucking boat on a badge because I don't want to be. 
<laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Know what boat it is, bro. That's what I don't get. Like, <laughs> that went viral for three cares, days, bro. bro. Who three days. fucking cares? Do you know what like I'm saying? Said, when my dad, me. when my dad moved to this country and he was going to school, yeah, then man, that was the time of the skinheads, bro. And my dad used to get mm. fucking chased by skinheads. Um, they would come out the pub drunk, and sometimes my dad and my friends would get chased. That never happened to me. Exactly. And get and and guess what? I'm not gonna tell my kids watch out for the skinheads <laughs> because why would I? Because they didn't fucking chase me. Skinheads with tattoos, mate. Yeah, do you know what I mean? You, know you got what I mean? one when you see them. <laughs> but that's what I mean. They didn't chase me. And my dad never passed that trauma down to me and said, oh, watch out for the skinheads. Mm. Like, he didn't. He just told me what he went through, but he never said, oh, like, you need to watch out for them because he understood that, yo, we don't live in that time no more. Yeah. And I understand now, when I have kids, they're not going to be living in the time where I was growing up. So why am I worrying about a fucking badge that was around long before I was here, bro? Why am I getting offended by that? Why is it that deep? It's not that deep, bro. How does it affect my life? It doesn't. That's the answer. How does that boat on that badge affect anybody's life in in 2024 it doesn't Man. do you know what i'm saying so if you want to get outraged about it you've got way much way too much time in your hands bro way too much yeah facts trust me you, that's it these men are slave to their own mind a man's talking mm. about about trips well get out your own head brother and get into the real world yeah but they always want to be seen as doing the doing the right thing online why why, why do these people chase validation from strangers it's weird, bro. Like, oh, look at me. I'm a great person. Bro, most of these people that are do-gooders, yeah, the weirdest yeah. people on the planet, and they've always got skeletons in the closet, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and they're always just trying to divert it to saying else to keep the attention off of what they've got going on. Yeah. Yeah, most of these people are wrong-uns, bro. Absolute wrong-uns. And they always have to find something to get offended by. Mm. Right? Every day, there's saying else to be offended by. These people must wake up every day absolutely bored. Yeah, yeah but, bro. Just sitting at yeah, home but, with bro. But that's what I mean. Man saying, yeah, like how does changing the color of the flag, um, the back of the flag or shirt affect someone's life, bro? It's just disrespectful and it's unnecessary because it didn't need to be done. Do you understand what I'm saying? That Man United badge has been the same way for, for as long as I can remember, in it. That England shirt's been changed recently. It didn't need to be done. It wasn't something that needed to be done. That's why it's a piss take. Do you know what I'm saying? If it was something that was always that way and we didn't know why and... Do you get me? But, bro, when certain traditions are there in a certain place, it doesn't need to be done. And this is what it is. It's just like when people argued, oh, the black James Bond thing. James Bond is a fictional character. However, James Bond has always been white. So I want James Bond to be white, bruv. As a black man, if I saw a black James Bond... I would think this looks weird, bruv. You know, like that. Just like if I saw a black yeah, Harry I'm Potter. Saying that, bruv. I'd be cancelled by saying no, that. No, but bro, but it's the truth, though. And if I saw a black Harry Potter, I'd be like, why the fuck is Harry... Do you know what I mean? Why is Harry black with cane roll? <laughs> like, bro... That, that, you, could be a, you, could be, you could be great, you know. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> bruv, man is saying... Bruv, man is saying that James Bond don't exist, yeah? Bruv, James Bond does exist now, bruv. Whether he's a fictional character or not, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter. He does exist, bro. Like, the writer wrote this prayer with blue eyes and blonde hair. So that's how I expect to see this motherfucker every single time. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, it Idris is... Elba would be a good James Bond. I can't lie. He yeah, would. no, but he can be fucking 008, blood. You don't have to be 007. <laughs> bro, do you understand what I'm saying? That like, is true. Done... I hear you, bro. I'm with you on this. Bro, yeah, if they true. done a black Batman, I'd be like, no, black Batman's not black, bruv. I don't care if Batman's a real person or not. If they done a white fucking T'Challa, bro, I would lose my mind. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about? Like, man, you just stop <laughs> taking the piss, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, D James Bond ain't a real person. Yeah, so neither is Bruce Wayne. Neither of them are black. What? Like, I don't have a problem with that. Why are you trying to correct things that don't need to be corrected, bro? Yeah, it's true. You but see what I'm saying? It, it don't need do. to be it's, corrected. It, it's all part of the game. It's all part of the oh. game. It's all part of testing the waters. Same with that England flag. Yeah, like That guy that said, why are you so offended? Bro, I'm English. The England flag, the cross of St. George, is white background with a red cross. Yeah, of course it That's is. It. 
It's been like that since I was born. It has been like that since day of time, bro. You do not need to add purple and pink to it. But this, but this, but, but this is what I'm saying, bro. Like at the end of the day, yeah. All I'm saying, guys, is these were not things, yeah. These were not things that existed in the past, and now they are using this right now, yeah, to divide people mm. and to create unnecessary problems. I never watched James Bond and said, you know what would be better if he was black <laughs> and instead of a martini he was drinking Hennessy. I ain't <laughs> never. Get him, get him or, a Mag or a Maggie, bruv. Man like Jamal Bond and that with the Magnum. <laughs> Man like the Shane. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I've never watched a fucking James Bond film and said, you know what? He's a bit too white for me, you know. You know, never. You know, like that. Never in my life. Because I just understood that that's who he is. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't make sense, bro. It's just like when we were watching the Black Panther and then they tried to make the girl the, ba the Black Panther. And I was like, no, no. Nope. I was like, end the film. You know, like that. Yeah, end the film, Dave. End the film. And then luckily, yeah, T'Challa had a son. You know, like that. So we were going to get the Black Panther back. Because I was like, nah, you can't make the girl the Black Panther. Man's not here. I'm not watching it. You know, like that. Because this is crazy to me. This Do you know what I mean? Bad. No, this but bro. <laughs> No, nah, but bro, this but bro, like nobody was talking about this, bro. Like nobody was sitting there saying, you know what, we need a black Batman, you know. Like no one, bro. Like bro, man, have got bills to pay. No one was really having these conversations. We went to the cinema, we watched it, we said this is fucking sick, mm. and we left. We weren't like, oh, why isn't Bruce Wayne black? Mm. But I've never. Man grew up on Batman. Batman, my favorite superhero. Man, seen every single Batman. I never once said, oh, we need a black Batman, you know. Nah, bro. It's not that deep. And for most people, it's not that deep. Nope. You know, but like again, that. It's part, of, it's part of throwing it out there, test Bruv, the waters. And then everyone. These conversations like, yeah. only happen on Twitter. Lee. They don't happen in yeah, real they life. They come to reality. They come to fruition because what they do is these media companies yeah, and these big film production companies, they go with it. Yeah? yeah. And they do it, test the water, see if they can get like a good traction off of it. Yeah, and now that then becomes the new normal. Bro. So they listen, rewrite history. It is social media, bro. Right, imagine all the, the imagine all the Asian about. Donnies, bro. Imagine all the Indian brothers saying, yeah, no, nah, we need a James Bond, bro. Yeah, man. We need a James Bond, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> imagine that. Yeah, get Jackie Chan back out of retirement, bro. Do you bro, know what I mean? Bro, bro, <laughs> listen. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Bro, that shit don't even make no sense, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, bro, in black countries, they have they have their own black films. In Asian countries, they have their own Asian films. In white countries, they got their own white films. So we are represented in our own countries, blood. In our native country, in our native countries, blood. If you go to Nigeria, bruv, you'll see Nigerian yeah, um, Nollywood, television. Nollywood, right? that, yeah, that, you'll see bare black right? people. TV Do you know what I mean? Why are you running? <laughs> That's it. And and then you've got your Bollywood thing. You've got everything, bro. So it's not like man are not represented. You're represented mm. in your own ends, bruv. When you're not in your own ends, I don't expect representation. I don't expect, yeah, a Caribbean restaurant. When, I, when, when I'm, well, bruv, listen, when I'm in Munich, when I'm in Germany, like, visiting my sister, I don't expect to have fucking roti hut on the corner, bruv. That man's in Germany, bruv. Yeah, if, if, like, you, it's if, you, not if, you go, if you go into a Caribbean restaurant, you expect a Caribbean to, man to serve you or a woman to serve you. You don't expect to see well, a white you go, English guy behind yeah, the counter. Bruv. <laughs> Listen, if I walked into a Caribbean restaurant and there's a Chinese woman at the desk, I'd be like, see you later. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Bro, man's name is James Bond, yeah? It's based in London, yeah? Way back. <laughs> Secret service and that. Bro, last time I checked, black man didn't want to be feds anyway. <laughs> You know, like that. Last time I checked, man didn't want to be feds. Do you know what I'm saying? And now all of a sudden, oh, no, we want to be James. No, we don't, bruv. Mm. We never wanted to be working with the police, ever. Ever. <laughs> you know, like that. So, whoa, so what are we doing? Like, bro, shit don't even make no sense. Like, bro, these man just getting upset for no reason. Like, but man it's don't just, want to be part minority, of it. But the minority becomes the majority because the production companies put it out there for them. But it's not really the majority, Lee. It's just people on 
It's just yeah, people but, online but the put it out shit. there and do it. Now they become that it becomes the majority because people are going and watch it anyway. <laughs> yeah, and then that becomes normal. Do you know what I'm nah, saying? Like, listen, I'll be real. Yeah, people that call for it, but then these companies go, "Oh, that's a good idea." Diversity. Yeah. Then they throw it out there, and then people are going to flood and watch it anyway. So now that becomes normal. Nah, but to be fair, yeah, lie, bruv. If they made a black James Bond, yeah, bruv, it would be the biggest tank in history because all the white <laughs> man wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. You know the ones they're like, bro. I'll be real. I'll be like, nah, this is nonsense. This is nonsense because it's so unnecessary. And that's what I mean about the England shirt, yeah. The colours on the England shirt is unnecessary because nobody asked for it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like when we're in the barbershop, we're not talking about a black James Bond, we're talking about football. We don't care about James Bond. James Bond's James Bond, bro. Batman's Batman. Do you know what I'm saying? Superman's Superman. It's playful creativity. That's what Nike. Bro, it's not playful creativity. It's disrespectful, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you change, when you change um, uh, uh, our country's um, the colours of of their flag, it's disrespectful. It's not creativity. It's a piss take. Yeah, but Nike know they can get away with doing it. That's why they've done it. Yeah. Yeah, and then bro, they've got the audacity to call it playful creativity, bro. That bro, is that's... English national flag. But I've seen they'll have your sons in nursery wearing dresses talking about playful creativity, bro. <laughs> Look, that's what they're gonna do, bro. That's what they're gonna do, man. Then what, man, man, watch out, you know. Go yeah, watch so the man, school play. He her. Can you come out of the sand pit, please? <laughs> bro, listen, oh, no, sorry, I'm, what... I'm Sammy. I'm so I'm playful Sammy. Creativity, bro. <laughs> that's what them man are gonna do right now, innit? Go to the school play and your son, do you know what I mean? And your son is flipping like like Mother Teresa and that. <laughs> Yeah, watch, man. Look at man. It's coming. It's coming. I mean, but you know what? There will be a tipping point. The same with football. Football will go back to something that resembles football that we grew up on at some point. Yeah. yeah at some point, there is always a tipping point. And there's a lot of people that sit quiet over these topics. Yeah. Mm. Right. But at some point, it's going to kick off. Yeah, but Lee, it is. But, but this is why you're seeing the rise here yeah, of the right wing and the nationalists, bro. Because, yeah. Things have gone so far left, yeah, that you almost need an opposite extreme, yeah, to rival it. So now people are, now you get idiots like Joey Barton, yeah, that Joey Barton's such an idiot, yeah, but I understand more what he's saying than what the other side are saying. You know Bro, them one. I'll, I'll tell you something right now. I I'm closer to I, Joey I, Barton, I, yeah, than I am yeah. to uh, flipping more. message, that's what, this I, what I, mean. I emailed his manager about two weeks ago. I said, Joe, I want to get Joey on my channel. I, I see he set a channel up. His manager yeah. come back to me the next morning and goes, yeah, he's up for that. Yeah, what day? Yeah. Monday. Yeah, I was like, no, I can't do Monday. I can do Wednesday. This is two yeah. weeks ago. He ain't come back to me. Bro, can you imagine if I got Joey Biden on my channel? Because <laughs> yeah. I, you know what I'm like? I just say it as it is, bro. But I'll stick I'll stick some certain questions on him. Yeah. Yeah, and say, yeah but that would make great content, but he didn't come back to me. But I, I've got it, he didn't come back to me. Because I was like, can you imagine, yeah, the meltdown online, Lee Gunner and Joey Barton on the Yeah, but show. bro, you know what it is, yeah? It's one of them ones where, bro, I, I'd sit down with him. I'd absolutely fry him, yeah? However, there's certain things he says that I agree with, bro. And that's the yeah. problem, yeah? Like, this world has gone so soft and it's gone so far left, yeah? Like, I see myself as quite balanced down the middle, yeah? But, bro, like, I look like Donald Trump in today's world. <laughs> You are fake news. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, bro, I honestly look like a right wing, far right, bro. Like David Beckham, touchline, bruv, chalk on boots. That's where I am, bro, right now in today's society. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, bro, I saw... Hey, brother, listen, I saw a thing, yeah? Let me see if I can find it on Twitter. Did you see it on Sky Sports? There was a thing, yeah, where it almost looked like... Almost looked like this girl didn't realize they were live and she didn't read the notes. And there was three three women on Sky Sports and and she was just like fully waffling, bro. She didn't know what was going on, yeah. And it killed me, bro, because it was Sky Sports News. A brother had it on his story. Oh, it's deleting now. Sky Sports News, yeah. And it was um who them gal called? The one that was the one that used to be. I don't know, I think it was was it ESPN? It might have been that. Melissa Reddy or something, and two other women. It was like it was a football show, but it was just three women, bro. For some reason, two on the sofa, and one of them was away. And then they were talking, and you could see that, like, she forgot the notes, and she was proper, like, just winging it, bro. And it's like it was so incoherent, it was so bad, yeah. 
And I was just like, bro, like they actually don't know what they're talking about. Like they're literally just like, it's almost like, you know, like when the camera goes live, but you don't realize you don't know it's, it's live. Gone live. Yeah. And it was just like, bruv, what are they talking about? Do you know what I mean? Like, what are they talking about? And even a men, a men's football panel with just three women, yeah, doesn't make sense. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like we've gone so far now the other way where they're just forcing. Oh, we never asked for it. Yeah, we never asked for anything. No, we didn't ask for it, but bro, they're forcing it in there just for optics, bro. And it's mm. like you're not even getting the best of the best if you're going to do that. You're just forcing it in, bro. Yeah, and the, the, the you know standard, what I'm saying? The, the quality of the content goes down, but the price goes up. And because bro, people are so obsessed sense, with football bro. and they want to watch the football, they, they pay the subscription because that's how they get to watch their football. Yeah. But yeah, this is the thing, yeah. Well, oh, over here, ESPN, they have a lot of women presenters. Yeah, mm. but they're on the touchline. They don't do the studio thing, really. On design, they don't. Movistar, yeah, but, do. I don't, but I don't I don't mind if they do. But what was weird about it was there was there was just three women there. Yeah, but they, so, were, yeah, they but, don't do that here. But it was men's football and I was confused. And then... The thing was mad, in it? And it's just like, yo, you've got to understand, yeah? When people say football is football, that's not true. Just like basketball is not basketball. Because if that was the point, yeah, then you would have women playing men's basketball. You don't. Well, that would be coming soon. It'd be mixed. It'd be mixed up with mixed teams in that soon, bro. <laughs> no, no, but they won't, Lee. Do you know what I'm saying? And the problem is, yeah, the problem with the whole situation was, yeah, bro, if these women came out and they said, we only want female commentators, we only want female coaches, we only want um, female hosts for our football, not one man would give a fuck, bro. Mm. Not one. There wouldn't be one man saying, no, nah, I want to commentate on women's football. I deserve it. Bro, we don't care, bro. You know, do, like do, that. Do you know where this is? Bro, because it's not our sport, bro. So I, as far as I'm concerned, there shouldn't be no men involved. None whatsoever. Mm. See, right, right, he does a lot of women's football. Yeah, but right, he's righty, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Like, he, no, he but bro, if he wants everywhere. to and they want him there, mm. then cool. But what I'm saying is, yeah, if we, if I know that I'm going to watch women's football, I expect the, the coach to be a woman. I expect the ref to be a woman. The lino to be a woman. I expect all women there. Bro. That's what I Studio, bro. panel. To bro, be the this best, is what the best, I expect, the bro. Great, like the, the legends of the women's game and stuff like that. Bro, the, the mad thing is, yeah, right, it's not even about men and women, yeah, because people say, oh, like, like what we're saying, people have probably clipped this up and say, oh, you're misogynistic. No, it ain't even that. We've had Gabby Yoroff, yeah, sitting on TV, yeah, as a presenter of men's football for years, years and years. Did anyone care? Does anyone care that Kenny Dalglish's daughter is sitting in the studio at Sky Sports every week? She's been doing that for a decade or more. Yeah, we don't care, bro. No, yeah, but no. it's when they're shoehorning people in. Yeah, not just women, but men as well. But the way they're oh, shoehorning. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the guys are useless. The guys are useless. But you know what pisses people off? Yeah, not me specifically, but it's the optics, bro. Because mm -hmm. when you start forcing them into places where they don't need to be, like when I watched the overlap here. The, the the one with social i think it was like five men and then they just put one woman in there and it's just like it looks awkward because where else in life would you see a room full of men with just one woman mm. you just wouldn't oh yeah do you Jill know what Scott. i'm saying yeah, Scott, yeah she's on that show all the time. yeah but yeah. but it looks awkward because then she tries to get into into the banter with the men but it's like you you can tell it's they're trying still, to involve yeah. her but it's not yeah natural. they're trying to involve her but the amount of times i notice they cut her off yeah because, because it's not deeper, natural yeah and it's not a natural flow yeah, I'm not saying she don't know her football because no, but it's not about whether she knows her football or not. What I'm saying is, yeah, it's not it's not natural, it's forced, and people can see it's forced, and that's what they have a problem with. Do you know what I mean? It's just like mm. even now, yeah. Now, every time my man turn on the thing, yeah, on Sky Sports, yeah, and it's just like them man are doing the diversity quota, so now there might be three black brothers and then <laughs> and then the one host, and yeah. it's like, bro, yeah, the like it's, white boy, <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, bro, this is England, yeah? Do you know what I'm saying? This is England, fam. Man, I've got three black brothers in there. Two of them don't know ball, but they're just there to tick off the box. Do you know what I'm saying? And then and then you got the white host. And it's like, bro, you man are doing this for optics, bro. This is why when the brothers that look at this and say, yo, this is our country, why is there three black man on there? I can see why they're pissed off because it's like, it's not even like there's three black man there because they're the best at their job. Yeah, there's three black man there because it's like, Tick, allow it. These men don't know ball. Mm. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what it is. Like, and, and that is my that is my main issue with it. Like, it's so obvious men are ticking boxes, bro. It's not even like they're going for the best in class, yeah? Yeah. It is forced. Well, Michael, Michael Richards was never a great footballer. Michael Richards is just... Nah, but, the, nah, the but, man. He's been, but he's funny. He's Michael Richards, be. when he was coming through, he, oh, he was, was a was star boy, good. though. He was, yeah, a he was a star boy, boy. Then he got injured and it all kind of... And I'm not even talking about Michael. But like no, but even Michael, when... Michael Richards, yeah, when he first broke onto the, the, the circuit on TV, I was yeah. like, why the fuck's Michael Richards here? But then the more he got into it, yeah, he's actually quality to listen to, but he, he, but he don't talk really about the game. He's just a hype man. No, no, Michael's he's there for... For the vibe, in it like he's but it's a, a good great... mix when he's with Henri yeah. and, and Carragher and Kate Abdo and all of that. Yeah, it's yeah. banter, bro. It's pure vibes. Yeah, no, but their thing's that. amazing. Their show's amazing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the Dead Sky Sports, the Dead Sky Sports ones where you can tell it's just bare forced, bro. Mm. Well, Do you know, know what I mean? It's like, bare bro, forced, like, and that's the thing. I'm against tokenism, bro. That's what I'm against. Mm. You know, See, like over, that over over here. Yeah, like it's slightly different. Yeah, over here. Um, you have one woman pitch side. She's normally the, the one presenting the show. Yeah, and then they'll have somebody like Guti pitch side. Yeah, or uh, Paolo Ferreira. Yeah, mm -hmm. Paolo Ferreira, who used to play for Chelsea and, and Barca. They'll have them pitch side or in the in the dugout or uh, not the, the gantry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, and they don't do the whole sit down because they're filtering it from from a different mm -hmm. channel. Like, so if it's Premier League football, they're filtering that stream from Sky Sports. So when mm -hmm. it goes half time, it just loops fifteen minutes of adverts. Don't get the whole studio thing. Yeah, yeah. When it's on Movistar Plus uh, for La Liga games, you'll have a woman in the studio as the presenter, and then you'll have two uh, two ex players, ex men's players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they don't tend to shoehorn and tick boxes so much over here. Yeah, but I get why people get the arm with it. Yeah, and it's not it's not even just women; it's it's the men as well, like you said. It's the men as well, but also is is bro Lee. The thing is, yeah, I know that life we don't live in an ideal world, yeah, where it can just be a meritocracy, yeah, and if you're good enough, you just get it and you get it on merit in it. Mm. I understand that. Do you know what I mean? But the problem that people will have is when it is forced, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. It is bloody forced in all aspects, bro. These men are doing this, this flipping representation, and it's forced, bro. Yeah, it's so forced. Do you know what I'm but saying? And I'm the thing saying is... It will become a tipping point because eventually, yeah, it's going to go so far south. <laughs> yeah, that over the next five, ten years, it will go back to something that we had before. Yeah. Where they won't be ticking so many boxes because so their their subscribers will go down in terms of like how many people are paying every month, yeah, or people are just like I don't know, do the illegal streaming and stuff like that. I don't know. But eventually, it's going to go the other way because there is a lot of people that just don't want it. But like it's the same, like you said, it's not just the women; it's the men as well. You have got people like Jermaine Jenis, bro. Like what? Does yeah, but bro, they they've been trying to groom him to be the next Gary Lineker for years. Mm. He's you got know, no like he was yeah. Lineker, so he'll probably get the gig. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, they've been forcing him to do that. But, bruv, man is sourceless, bro. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? Man's got nothing about him. Same with and that's what it is. Exactly and this is exactly what I'm saying. Every correction is an overcorrection. And this is why, mm. yeah, this is the point. Everything's gone so far left now, yeah, that, like, when you say stuff that's down the middle, it seems like you're on the right. There's no middle ground no more. It's either you're extremely flipping liberal and everything goes... Or you're just like, fuck everyone. I hate everyone. There's no in the middle anymore, bro. And this is the problem. Everything's an overcorrection. And this is why there's a rise of the Trump supporters in America and there's a rise of the far right and people like Nigel Farage here yeah, can make a living, bro. Because yeah. they've overcorrected so many things, yeah, to the point where it's so obvious that it's forced and people are getting pissed off now, bro. And I fully understand it. Yeah, mate, I totally agree. I totally agree. Like, and, and this is the thing, it is forced. But most people are sheep, bro. Yeah, so they just accept it. Like with the flag on the back of the shirt, they've changed it. Oh, it's just a shirt. It doesn't matter. Because there's so many people that go down that path. Of, oh, it don't matter. Oh, why are you whinging? Oh, it's nice to have a woman or it's nice to have this person on or it's nice to have that. And people just accept it, bro. Yeah, mm. and then anyone who calls it out, yeah, you're misogynistic, you're racist, you're this, you're that. Yeah. yeah, so they try to silence you with these big words, yeah, and try to dismiss what you're saying, even though what you're saying is factual and, and correct. And yeah, but bro, there's no diversity. Majority, but the majority don't speak up, bro. It's only a bro. minority of the 
the majority Fact. of the club. And you know it's tokenism because there's no diversity where it matters. Because yep. there's no diversity in decision making. Because all, all the true. people making all the decisions and have all the power still look the same. Bro, how, how so, many? How many? Um, how much diversity is there in any boardroom in the top six clubs? There's none. Uh, how many Asian, black, yeah, like directors or board members are there in bro, our club? There's clubs? none, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? And th and this is the point. There's no real diversity. It's all an image, and this is why I don't want it, bro. Because it's not real, bro. Do you know what I mean? It's all tokenism, bro. That's all it is. Like, even the fact that they got rid of um, Matt Letizia and Glenn Hoddle, yeah? And then, yeah, cool, they're bringing in loads of black people, but it's like, Matt Letizia actually knows ball. He didn't need to go. And the guys that are sacking him look like him anyway, bruv. You know, <laughs> like that. So, it's just, do you understand? I, I love Letiz, bruv. He don't give a shit. Yeah, he bro. just don't care, bruv. So, yeah, so you know what it is? It's right, like the right message, wrong messenger, bruv. Same with Joey Barton, right message to a certain degree on a lot of topics, but the wrong messenger. Yeah, same with us. We're the right message with our clubs a lot of the time, but we're the wrong messenger, bruv. Yeah, because yeah. we've been straight away dismissed because we're toxic and negative. Yeah. And then that becomes a thing. The amount of times mm -hmm. I see you trending or see clips of you online. And all, I go through the comments. Yeah, I'll never send them to you because you don't want to fucking see it. Who cares? You don't send them yeah. to me when you see mine. Yeah, yeah, bro. I don't yeah. care about that. Yeah, we don't care, bro. I'll just laugh. But I go through the comments. He's a fake fan. Rance is disgusting. He's not a United fan. Yeah, same with me. Lee Gunn is a fake fan. Bro, if we had a pound for every time we've been called fake fans, bro, we'd be minted. Oh, yeah? bro. Like, we'd, 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 we'd have about 50 mil in the bank, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. But this is what they do. They dismiss anybody who puts their head above the parapet real quick. Yeah, and calls it out, and yeah. you get dismissed with words like racist, misogynistic. Yeah, but Lee, but this is what I've been saying. When people can't argue your point, they just try and assassinate your character. That's all they do, isn't it? These guys mm. are all bums, bro. This is what it is. They can't think for themselves, and that's that's the problem. We live in a society now where it's like everyone just wants to blend in because everyone's afraid to have an opinion of their own. And the thing is, they're afraid to have... um a public opinion of their own so a lot of the time people agree with what i'm saying but, they, but they're too scared to say it whereas me i don't give a fuck and yeah. that's the difference i don't care bro because i know yeah that these men know deep down whether they want to admit it or not yeah that the opinions that they have are not their own anyway most of these people haven't even sat down and thought why do i actually believe this trust the process okay well what is the process then fella uh, uh, uh mm. bro a lot of these people that don't like our footballing opinions yeah on our clubs a lot of them, mm. they tune in and watch it, and they probably agree with a lot of what we say. Mm. But it's fashionable to hate on us. Yeah. yeah? So it'll get them the most traction. They'll look like a top fan, but they probably believe half of what we're saying is true. Yeah? Mm. But the, the other half gets them more traction, isn't it? Why yeah. do you always trend when Man United win? Oh, he didn't celebrate the goal. He's so negative. He's a fake fan. What are you waffling about? Why don't you ever trend when, when you do celebrate a goal? Because it don't get them traction, bro. Yeah, and this is what it is. And this is the internet. And that is the internet on a smaller scale with us. <clears throat> but it's the same concept on other topics. Yeah, these people, yeah, will only post out stuff that gets them traction. Yeah, mm. they've not got their own opinions. Yeah, they no, just they don't. But that's what I'm saying. They're posting, life. yeah, for the dopamine hit of getting mm. comments and retweets. So they're just posting what they know that other people are going to interact with. They don't have their own opinion. They're performing for people. These are not real people. Yeah, man. Performing seals, bro. And that, that's what they are. And because, and when you're not a performing seal in today's age, yeah, bro, you have to do it the hard way. And that's why I said, you see when we get our 100Ks, bro, that's going to hit different, bro. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Because, bro, like, in order to get to a certain size, yeah, in in this current society, you have to sell your soul in some way, shape, or form, whether it's to a corporation or it's not standing up for certain beliefs that you have. Like, you have to compromise yourself in some way. You have to wake up every mean? day and lie. Yeah, bro. Like, if you're authentically, yeah, someone with an opinion and something about them, yeah, you can't get nowhere, bruv, in this society quickly, bro. You can't. The quickest way to get to the top is compromise yourself and be like everyone else. It's the quickest way. Or just be the funny guy that's got no opinion. Because then you're harmless. Mm. You're just a clown. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Be the clown. With, comes out with, oh, I apologise to this person for slagging him off. Uh, he's a shit footballer. But I, I actually see what he's doing. Then the following week, he drops a stinger. Oh, get him out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, 
and and you'll go viral real quick bro there's people on tiktok making a fortune out of doing that yeah yeah coming up with the most wild takes on a weekly basis yeah same with twitter yeah the fact that we've got nearly 100k each yeah, yeah. by keeping it real and saying what our truth is yeah i don't care if people hate me bro i couldn't I care less yeah because at the end of the day yeah I go to bed every night and I sleep sweet. I'm I'm cool, bruv, because I know that I'm saying what I believe to be true. And at the end of the day, I've said this and I'll say it again on here, yeah? If Mikel Arteta wins the league this season, that's a great achievement and it's better than if he'd done it last season. If he yeah. wins the double, yeah, wow, give him a statue because he's got us over the line in a Champions League and a Premier League. And that's 30 years and 20 years without winning either try well we ain't won in europe for, well at all for 30 years but we never won a champions league bro if he wins a double this season give him a statue and i'll be the first person on the planet to say do you know what fair play to that guy bro yeah, but at the end of the day he hasn't got over the line yet yeah and the margins are small it's elite level sport yeah and how people get so emotionally attached to a paid employee that couldn't give a shit about you don't even know you exist yeah and will not be at the club in the next 5 10 15 years why yeah, but they, they have to have a, a coping mechanism. So it's they always have to have a villain. You're the villain for Man United. Side's the villain for Man United. No, but bro, um, listen, it, it gives them something to live for, Lee, because most of these people will never be anything in their lives, and it's okay. Hmm? Now, these people ain't shit, bro. Like, they, they, this is what it is, bro. Misery loves company. And, and the thing is, like, the, the overwhelming majority of the planet are just miserable people looking for somewhere to direct their misery, innit? And... Hmm. And bro, like they, they need someone, they need a villain, bro. Do you know what I mean? I'm more than happy to, to accept the role. Oh, yeah, 100%. Bro, people more are more than happy worried to about our opinions on Man United and Arsenal than they are about the club winning. Bro, listen, I'm more than happy to accept the, the reward, bruv, on the behalf of myself. It's no problem. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's no problem. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I get way too much right and I, and I don't get my flowers for it. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> So it just is what it is, isn't it? So for the little things that people want to nitpick about, bro, I just don't care, man. It's beautiful. Mm. It's beautiful. I'll be completely honest. I couldn't give a flying fuck. You know what I mean? So the mm. game is the game, people. I right, big up everyone inside. Run up the lights. Right, before we go as well, because I've got um, a Sarcasm City special with Flawless. But there was a question, um, a super chat that I need to answer about, where is he? About... Pep Guardiola team. Yeah, here it is. It said we're the best team in the old school football days be a Pep team today, bro. That Milan 2005 team would absolutely smoke Pep Guardiola. I the think Pep he... also would smoke this Pep team. Yeah, of course. Of course. But when I'm talking about individuals, yeah, like, bro, you see Pep's team, we all know that Pep's Pep's team struggles against low blocks, isn't it? Like they struggle. They struggle to create, especially right now. When you look at um the Milan team with Cafu, Maldini, Costa Curta, Shevchenko, Gattuso, Inzaghi, Rui Costa, um, Nesta, Seidorf, Kaka, Pirlo, Stam. Like, bro, that team would absolutely batter this man city team bro like their man would just sit back let these men have the ball and the quality would take over in it and they've got the physicality to match their physicality yeah gattuso yep, pirlo kaka Sado, forget it bro yep Sam, bro he's beating up erlin harland left right and center Shevchenko, <laughs> bro, listen, that team there would have murder Mm. So when man talk about systems and all that, fuck a system, read boy. Put KDB in the midfield with Gattuso and Sadoff and that. It'll get bruv. They'll break him up. He, he wouldn't touch the ball. He wouldn't touch the ball, bro. Let's just be yeah. real with it. Kaka in midfield, Pirlo and that. Nah, get out of here, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, Shevchenko up front. Yeah, yeah, mate. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of teams back yeah. in the day. Yeah, there's a lot of teams back in the day that would beat this city team. Yeah, this city yeah. team is not the greatest team you've ever seen, lads. Don't don't get it twisted. They are not. Yeah, yeah that Barcelona team that Pep had's miles clearer of this team. Nah. Yeah, even the Galacticos back in the day, I know they didn't win a great deal. Yeah, like the, the prime Galacticos didn't win a massive amount of trophies. Bro, that team was mm. absolutely amazing. Yeah, but they just didn't didn't win a lot. Yeah, but they were awesome, bruv. Yeah, that they, with El Bosque and, and then Capello yeah. when he came. Yeah. Bro, you know what? The revisionism in football is really, really funny, you know, because man said, oh, they didn't batter Liverpool in 2005. They did batter Liverpool. 
But they just battered them for one half and they didn't kill the game off. Mm. You know them, man? And that's the funny thing. Up. They Not only were they 3-0 up, but I think Kaka missed a couple chances as well, yeah, in that game, yeah, in yeah. the first half. It could have been five or six. Mm. You know, like that. And the thing is, people look back now because Liverpool ended up winning the game, yeah? And you don't realise, sometimes in football, some things are just can't be explained. Some things are just written. Mm. You know them ones there? Like, they battered that Liverpool team. They did. And they didn't win the game. That's And that happens sometimes. They thought, they, they thought they'd won it at half-time. They were celebrating at half-time, weren't they? Oh, 100%. That was a freak result, bro. Like, you you might remember when, was it Celtic beat Barcelona and they had, like, 8% possession? <laughs> you know, like that. It was one of them ones. Like, it was one of them games where it's like... Yeah, man, sub Crespo. That's true, he did. He sub Crespo at half time. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine? Man's on a hat, he, bro, and he subbed him. <laughs> yeah, bro. Big up Ancelotti, bro. <laughs> nah, bro, th this is what I'm trying to say. Like, people will always try and rewrite history and say, oh, they didn't battle. They killed Liverpool. The same way Bayern Munich killed us in the final and we won. Mm, we got I back. Rom's in the chat as well, man. He said that that dude penalty save was sus. Facts. Bro. Bro. Um, I'm telling you, that was Jose, on the, dude that was on the edge of the six yard box. Yeah, proper. Bro, Jose's Chelsea in 05 would smoke this team. Yeah, because you ain't scoring against them. 15 goals conceded, bro. 95 points. Now, this current Man City team, out of all the City teams that Pep's won the league with, is probably the, the weakest one, if we're being honest. Yeah, yeah this season, definitely. Mm, even even the last season, one. they were quality last season, but that, this, the, this ain't his best team at Man City. No, it's, it's not hell no. And Mahrez and all that in it, man. Of course, like, of course, of course. This Man City team is there to be got at. This is your best, your best, in my opinion, this is your best opportunity to win the league, even more so than last season because there's no Mahrez, there's no Gundogan. Mm, yeah, two clutch players that bag. Right, and even if they're not bagging, they, they're getting assists and if they're not doing either, they're still problems, both of them. 100%. Yeah, and, and then in the biggest moments, like I think last season, Mahrez, Mahrez got like 25 or 30 GA, bruv. Like, how are you replacing that? <laughs> like, let's yep. just be real. It's not even just the GA. It's the fact that you can't ever get the ball off the geezer. Same with yep. Gundogan. Yeah, Gundogan, exactly. 15 seconds into a cup final. Bang, have some of that. Fact. Like 15 seconds, bruv. The, the game was done after 15 seconds. Yeah. Like, now you're chasing the game. Now you know you're getting taken apart. Yeah, and it's like they you can't you can't buy that level of experience, man. Well, you can you can buy experience, but you can't buy that level of experience at that club. No. Yeah, like going through the hurt of getting knocked out in Champions League semis to Real Madrid, getting knocked out in the quarters, but then you actually go and do a treble. Yeah, but then you get three, four, five of them players that have done a treble all leave the football club at the same time, and you replace them with Kovacic. Fair enough, he's won a Champions League. Nunes, yeah, Vardial, Doku. I can't horrible, that. horrible, horrible. But also, that shows you the state of modern football that Pep can't find players with the quality of the players he's had to get rid of because they don't exist. Mm. They don't exist. And that is further proof that footballers are getting worse because there's not, they're not out there no more. Do you know what I mean? They're not out there no more. Before, you used to be able to go like for like with players. You can't go like for like with players no more. because That's what I'm saying. When, of the in generation like when, we, when we play Man City at the end of this month, there ain't going to be none of this, oh, yeah, it's um, it's Saka up against Vardy Al, Rodri versus Rice. Yeah, back mm. in the day when it was Arsenal Man United, bruv, it, it was, was like... Keane versus right, Vieira, Vieira, yeah. Yeah, Keane Vieira, Pires versus Neville. Yeah, yeah. matchups all over the park, bro. They ain't going to build it up like that because they can't. They might try. Yeah. But, you, bro, let's just be real. There's no jewels in your... There's, There's no, no jokes anymore. You know what I mean? It used to be, it used to be Gary Neville against um, it would Pires. be over Marcel Perez. Um, yeah. It'd have been against Perez, yeah. Gary Neville against Perez. It would have been over Mars against our, our left back or whatever, and so on and so forth. That's how it would have been. It was isolated. It was duels. Now there's no duels, bro. Like it's not Holland versus like Saliba. Like yeah. it's not. Do you know what I mean? That's not how football works anymore. Now it's it's literally Pep versus Arteta, and that's how we built up. Yeah, because they like can't the master build versus, versus the apprentice player. and that. Yeah, the master and apprentice, and in the build up to that game, Pep have been pants down, gnawing him off again. Oh, he's a great coach. He's this and that. He does it every year. It's like little brother tax, isn't it? Like, do you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, he does. He little bros him every year, bro. Mm. Yeah, but I do think this. I do think that 
if we go to the Etihad and beat him, I'll, I'll be extremely confident we win the title. Yeah, yeah. I think you've won the league. I think you've won the league if you beat them. That's mm. why for me, this is the biggest game of the season. That's why I'm, uh, bro, I'm watching it. Like, yeah, the problem, I'm the problem we have is from that City game to 18 days later, we've got five games, including that City game, and two of them are against Bayern. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not easy, bro. Three days, bro. For, eight, for every three days, six games, yeah. Got it's not easy, away. but they've got Madrid as well, so it's not easy for either of you. This is why Liverpool, are, I, should, I think, should be favourites. Because Liverpool, yeah, Liverpool are favourites. They've got an easier running, yeah, and they're in the Europa League, bro. Yeah, yeah. we got we got to go Brighton away and then Bayern Munich. Mm. Yeah, we've got Aston Villa, we've got Luton. Like, I know we should beat Aston Villa and Luton at the Emirates, mm. but then we're going Brighton away and then Bayern. Yeah, and like... Bro, this is where he's got to earn his money now. This is where we see whether Saka's world class. Yeah, this is where we see whether this manager is actually the real deal. Yeah, yeah, because this is what I wanted to get into this position. But now we're in this position. Now win it. Otherwise, you ain't the guy, bro. Four straight years. Get him out if you don't win nothing. Yeah, but you know what I think is his... If we lose the league on goal difference, then I may yeah. reconsider... That, that's different. Honestly, bro, even if... Bruv, listen. I don't think he's going nowhere. Oh, he ain't going nowhere, bro. He's regardless... Yeah, I reckon he's at Arsenal as long as he wants to be at Arsenal. Like, until he, like, fails, like, badly. Now he's... You know what it is, yeah? The two eighth and the fifth season, yeah? That's out the way now. Now people are looking at it like, cool, Arteta's arrived. So that means finishing... Where did he finish? Third? Uh, second last season. Okay, second. If he finishes second, then third. As long as he stays in the top three... He'll have a job. That's what I if think. He, if now. he finishes fifth, yeah. That, yeah, he can't drop back down to fifth again after being there. Like he has to now stay in the top three. As soon as he falls out of the top three, I think he's in danger. As long as he stays in the top three, I think his job safe. Yeah, if if Tottenham finished above us this season, I think he'd be in danger. It's a lot. Of oh that, yeah, oh, yeah. Who yeah, 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 I finished above us with Aston Villa? Yeah. Which is still a possibility, by the way, because if we lose mm -hmm. to City and then lose to Villa, <laughs> all of a sudden we could be fourth. Right. Yeah, that's fucked. That's fucked. Yeah, and that's, that's what how I mean. tight it is. Yeah, and, and this, this just shows how well Unai Emery is doing at Aston Villa, considering their away form was dead for the first three months of the season. Mm. Yeah, and they're still in Europe. Yeah, but if he, you're right. I think if he goes, if he finishes fourth, fifth, sixth, he's gone. Yeah, and I bet, mm. and it'll be based on the fan base wanting to get rid of him because they'll realise actually Unai or Anja finished above him. That ain't acceptable. Yeah. yeah, but the club will never get rid of him, bro. Yeah, he's there for right. as long as he wants, like Wenger. Yeah. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Are uh, you lot run up the likes? We're going to redirect to the Sarcasm City special with Flawless. Um, what are you saying, Lee, anyway? What you got coming up um, for the weekend? I've got time, man. I'm about 15 minutes late for a stream I was on with TJ Warren. <laughs> Say no yeah, more. I'm on with TJ, and then uh, about an hour from now, I'm going live for Spain, Colombia. Oh, he loved that. Yeah, you're yeah, busy. Yeah. The game as well, bro. He just sent me a video, uh, a video of him in the stadium. It's Mrs. Colombian, isn't it? Yeah, he's, oh, he's got his Colombia shirt on, bro. This guy's got more more clubs than me. I can't lie. Yeah, that's that's crazy. <laughs> now nah, shout him out, bro. Shout out Northside, my brother. You get me. I uh, big up everyone inside. You know, what I'm saying, smash the like here, and then yeah, I'm gonna see you in um the stream with flawless. We're pretty much going straight away, people. So, um, big up everyone inside, and yeah, man. United, bring it on. Oh, man. And I'll catch you guys in a sec. <laughs>